Liquid versus Team Secret. Game well, one. Welcome to this excellent game one of this super important draft here, guys. What are the main points that we're going to be focusing on here? Oh, well, I don't we know got... where to start, man. I'm still, I still have a bit of jitters, honestly. It was, uh, I almost forgot to come do my job, but... Uh... But you're here. It's fine. <laughs> so what do you got now? Oh, man. These teams know each other well, right? Kuro and Puppy, they've played together at 3TIs. There's history here. They're the only two players that have been at every single one. Like, you got to look now at, like, the legacy of these teams, of these players, because it's not about the meta anymore. It's about, all right, what do we believe in? And I honestly, I honestly don't know. I'm surprised. Not, oh, gee, yeah, there you go. They let the Wisp through. I mean, there's, there's a lot of really strong heroes right now that feel like auto wins, right? You got like Wisp, Alchemist feels too good. Tiny's extremely good, maybe not first round ban. Enchantress is super good. So you got to let somebody through, right? Even Chen for good Chen teams. Yeah, that's true. But Wisp of all heroes. Yeah. Like this is the one, you know, people trying to theory craft, what do we ban against OG? You know, Wisp is a must, you think about, but. Do you feel like a lot, of, uh, do you feel like any teams have really given countering Iowa a good try though? It kind of feels like they draft lineups, but they're not like, okay, we got to beat the Io. I, I don't necessarily know what it is, but there's got to be something you can do, right? There's there's an example, Chen. You can take over the, the neutral creep that he's tied to. Yep. It's going to force him to tether to somebody that's slower. Yeah, it's going to leave him defenseless in the early game, potentially, if you gank him. That's one option. It's true. It used to be like the good heroes were heroes that were good against like two, right? Like Grimstroke and Ember. These heroes that have like a double spell built yeah. in. But now this Wisp doesn't need another hero. He yeah. gets Ags and a creep, and there's no other heroes for you to link to. And he's just dealing, you know, hundreds of magic damage per second. Yeah, it's pretty insane. I'm not surprised to see the Tide Hunter as well picked up by Liquid. Every game where it's available, they tend to go for it. Earlier in the tournament, it was a second phase for them. Now, you know, main stage, you want to make sure you've got that AoE lockdown that your draft's going to need. And one of the better ways to counter against a Wisp, although this is traditionally only, you only conceptualize Wisp as a four position, whereas now it's most likely the carry. You want to have team fight. You want to prevent the Wisp from being able to play other ends of the map so that you're always able to press your advantages five. So Secret, uh, I think they played Omni in their first series today. They yeah. did Omni Bristle as their two cores. I think Omni Wisp is kind of a similar idea. You have this really tanky strength core, and you make them tankier. It's going to be a lot harder to kill him too, because status resistance is halved, so combo initiations against him is less likely to work. And um, bursting this Wisp is really hard. Overcharge, you have so much damage reduction. And if you try to get somebody else, Io's probably going to tether to that guy, yeah. give him overcharge. And then if the Omni heals the Io, they get extra heal. There's just a lot of cool combos with it. But it, what's it, a weakness, though? Uh, I, it depends on how they finish the draft, really, because these two heroes are arguably the best at supporting in a lineup. And the cool thing about it is we don't know what role either of these heroes are. It could be a traditional Wisp. It could be a carry wisp. That could be a puppy Omni Knight. It could be a mid one Omni Knight. We actually have no idea. I think it's not a mid one Omni Knight, but it, it could be a mid one wisp. I think he's played that before. I've seen him playing in pubs. I think like Oracle is one of the heroes that you would think are good against these two, right? If there wasn't a Chen, you have the Fates Edict to kind of defend against the, you know, the balls from the wisp, mm -hmm. and then you can purge uh, GA from the Omni. But they already have a Chen, so maybe he's looking forward to getting the purge creep, like the small Seder. Purging the GA in the middle of fights. Yeah, I, I mean, dispels are huge against Omni, but I just feel like the IO problem is is the elephant in the room. It's yeah. That you you get Ags and you have this like 700 range buffer where if they get closer to you, that's kind of okay. it's kind of bad for IO. But if they stay on that like mid to long range, IO just out damages everybody. So yeah. you need stuff that can gap close against them, right? Oh, for sure. So and what do you do? I honestly don't know. This this you pressure is what, him. Secret won the toss. They took first pick. I, I feel like. At the start of the tournament, I lean second pick favorite. But now with the onset of these heroes like Wisp, that it feels like ET, like Alchemist, you, you don't want to play against them under any circumstances. And Kuro's hopefully going to surprise us because thus far I don't think anyone's figured out Wisp, at least at the main event stage. Yeah, there's all the heroes that you can think about jumping in. I don't think deal enough damage, right? Like you can take an Ember or a Storm per se, right? They jump this Wisp, they're not going to kill him. And they're just going to kill whoever jumps this Wisp right now, which makes this hero so scary, especially with Omni Knight. He's so tanky. He goes. The build's been Helmet Dominator, Ag's Heart. And he has like 3k HP. He's gonna have a Heavenly Grace, you know, another 300 HP, 50% status resistance. 
Well, one, one upside is that most of the IO games we've seen, they're also paired with Elder Titans. So not only gave them a good laning stage, uh, because Elder Titan can become so fast with Astral Spirit, but also because he amplifies the spirit damage that's dealt. Yeah. So maybe there's a laning option here. I, see that. I like the Earth Spirit in theory, just because you provide like the most possible lockdown of any four position. And we've seen too many times now these Carry Wisps living with you know, 10, 20% HP, and boom, they tether away to a teammate at light speed, and they survive. When you have an Omni Knight as well, it, the more lockdown and silence you have, the better, because you're going to be playing again. If you if you only have like a Ravage to play around, right? Then all of a sudden this Omni Knight, if he can just juke the Ravage and then grace somebody, one of his cores, they get a BKB off, suddenly you're winning this fight yeah. because there's no more lockdown remaining. This allows you to at least initiate and perhaps be able to 100 to zero a core while CCing one of these incredibly versatile support heroes, which again, could be a core for all we know. So that's most likely the five, right? That's probably a puppy witch doctor, I think. Yeah, most likely. Very effective against Tide. You can't dispel mm -hmm. off uh, Maledict. Um, and then he also transitions to killing solo cores later on. Yep. I love the Lesh pick. Yeah. I mean, you know me. Uh, this is my favorite hero in Dota. I think the Disco Pony is perfect here. You love playing it against Wisp because you, you just get in and you do tons of AoE damage. Wisp naturally is going to be positioned around other allied heroes. Leshrac does arguably the most AoE possible in Dota 2. And in addition, it's one of two hero secrets played more than 10 times this year that they have over 90% win. And I know Liquid's picked it up, but my point is simply that Secret have abused heroes like Lesh, like Enigma, this early tower pressure throughout the entire year, the winningest team thus far in this circuit. And I think Liquid now have this excellent team fight composition, and they're going to be able to push the tempo Perhaps Roche into racks in like 20 minutes if they get ahead. So Secret picked uh, OD, which is kind of not the like steroid type of mid people pick with the carry They were picking Gyro, Windrunner, I think Troll Warlord was ran by OG as well. They pick these heroes that usually attack fast, right? Or attack multiple targets. So that the Wisp, if they go late game, the Wisp is also going to be a threat. So this is a little more old school, I think. The Omni OD is like a you know, yeah. year or two old. It's a throwback for sure. Yeah. Back when it was Magic Community, right? On Repel. Yeah. Do you think this signals that they might not run IO as a carry? I don't think they can like can run it as a support right now. They have no stuns besides like casket. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if there's like BKBs going, exactly. this uh, OD is gonna do nothing. Yep. And so they need this like support that either has some short cooldown on stuns. Maybe they can even run like a Lion Four yep. or something along these lines. And I don't usually see Secret like they're the team that popularized Enigma. Like, you know, Yapsor is 28 and two. They could or the team is 28 and two on the year. And you look at this, you have nothing against BKBs, absolutely nothing. So their last pick is going to have to be able to, I assume, do some kind of physical damage. Otherwise, yep. like is really Wisp OD is your one and two. That's very ambitious. Like the Wisp can turn into like physical at once 25. But before 25, you're yep. mostly about balls. So your yep. Ag's tethering to a core with your heart, so he can hit high ground, but what core do you tether? Yeah. And look at Liquid's lineup. That That's not a draft that's looking to go to 45 minutes. They're going to be probably peaking in terms of like the lineup's gold uh, efficiency okay. usage around 20. And a Shrieker off lane? Mid? Support? Carry. Yap Source Hero, perhaps? Mid Mir one played at mid the other day against the... Yeah. Miracles also played a carry for Liquid. So Secret kind of taking, you know, they're looking at other people's notebooks. They took the Wisp from OG. They could take the carry or Shaker from Liquid. This is their counter pusher, right? That's one thing that yeah. Secret's lineup is super missing, actually. Yeah, it's true. And I, I feel like it, I'm leaning towards it's a Yap Source Shaker because they've been wanting to last... Ooh. Oh, jeez. So way? at uh, the last major, I think uh, Liquid picked this versus LGD the Meepo versus OD matchup. And the yep. matchup, I think, was hard for the OD, but the Meepo crushed him after 15 minutes. Yep. He and can Astro 1, and then he just goes down. Liquid have won every game in this lower bracket with these weird last picks. This is another one, and it's a weak comfort pick. Like, I love this draft. It's Secret's got an uphill battle. Well, right before we throw it to the casters, let's toss it over to Nahaz for the last word. So much of this series is going to be defined by a matchup between two dynamic core position players, Miracle and Nisha, already staking their claim statistically as two of the best players ever in land competition. 
Kills per minute, Miracle 9.4. That is almost a full kill over any other player out of the 244 players with 100 plus appearances all time. These two players join Ramsey's as the only other in the top five in career GPM and experience per minute and win rate, both of them in the top 10. Nisha in only his first year with Secret. Hero wise, we got that core aisle potentially in the hands of Secret undefeated here in the main event, but Liquid counter with Meepo. We 26 career wins on Meepo, most in pro Dota 2 all time. We got one hell of a match coming up to you. Who better to bring it to you back in NA? They're the pride of the Pacific Northwest, but they're spitting straight fire on the stage in Shanghai. Here are Lyrical and Trent. Thank you so much, Nahaz. And yes, Trent, a legendary matchup we got coming up right now. Liquid, Secret, tail as old as time. How you feel, my man? Uh, absolutely fantastic. We're here. I like what Kyle said. Liquid, they haven't dropped a game. Mm. Through the lower bracket, the same story as the previous year. Something about the upper bracket is for people in britches, I think he said, Miracle. <laughs> it was something along those lines. Either way, they're here again, and this time they're taking on to you sequels. Amazing stuff. Yeah, I think that a lot of people, again, you might forget that Liquid was the TI7 winners with all the emphasis that was given over to LGD and OG last year. These guys came in fourth, you know, they put on a very solid performance, but now needing to make it happen yet again for themselves. And of course, Secret finally able to, able to overcome that hurdle of not making it past the fifth, six spots. Both teams, a lot to prove. They got to do it here on the big stage in Shanghai. Yeah, they found themselves into a matchup versus this uh, newly rejuvenated Liquid. And uh, it features our friend, Mr. Weeha, and uh, the hero that first made him famous, right? Yeah. The, the Meepo. And perhaps infamous, however you want to put it, but uh, Weeha showed up on the map because of this lovely group of heroes. And uh, you ban his TA. Sure, he's been playing that a lot, but uh, the Meepo is where his heart truly resides. And I mean, this is really a good Meepo game. You look at this lineup, and Earthshaker always something they get a little bit concerned about, but there are a lot of heroes that are around to protect them. We'll have to wait and see, as already a little bit of a battle looking for these bounty rooms. Puppy throws out the cask and able to steal away that bounty. So three going the way of Secret early on as Mind Control still taking a lot of damage there. Uh, but we'll be able to pick up the Bounty Rune and then salve up afterwards. Yeah, this Earth Shaker, it's, it's kind of like that classic, like, new counter almost of, like, versus the Broodmother, where you're like, oh, I'm going to Echo Slam all these spiders. Surely oh. this will be good. That cast did not oh. bounce. A puppy now in some trouble as the punch down comes from Curl. Very fire to heal back up, eats his way through the trees, and that's enough to get the captain away. Ooh, keeping it nice and easy peasy there from Nish on that core aisle. As, uh, yeah, this match, we heard Gunner talking about it as well, where uh, into that mid and late game, that's where this Meepo versus the, uh, the Odie's really going to shine. Meepo, of course, a hero that loves to build just stats all around and uh, doesn't really fall too hard uh, prey to the Sanities unless mid one gets, like, super farmed, right? Yeah, that is definitely a problem. Mid one starts to build the lead. This hero's so good at snowballing. The thing we haven't really talked about as of yet is Miracle and GH down bottom. That Earth Spirit and Leshrac trying to stand up against the Omni Knight. As we have again, going to take some of those pot shots. Um, but yeah, kind of an interesting little roll in as we see Zai just going to waltz away. Yeah, at the same time, mid lane, they're threatening with Yapsor here. We have getting pretty low. Just waiting to see if they can find that one moment. The, the Astral was just coming up here. Need the block Opening. off. They have to set up for this perfectly with the Banishment running out. It's going to be the walk over from Yapsor and first blood drawn by the Earthshaker. As is tradition for Yapsor, he will take the most gold possible at the very beginning of the game. And that, that's fully completed uh, Tranquils, I believe, for him right now, actually. Already this early, not opting for those earlier uh, Soul Ring builds. Okay. Well, we'll have to watch and wait and see how that goes for him, but obviously in this uh, top lane as well, Nisha and the Witch Doctor is going to try and lay out whatever damage they can, but there is a wraparound that's coming up top as well, as we do see Yapsor move over into position to try and save Puppy, who again was just taking a beating. Puppy's just like, can I please just get to level two? I can get this double heal action going on where you can really abuse some mechanics. But uh, he's struggling to get there. Just one more creep. Oh, okay. Light, life's good now. Oh, and we'll have a pause just to consider exactly. Of course, we've got some sort of a technical issue there for the teams that they'll work on. But uh, yeah, Secret keeping the uh, 
the cards close to their chest throughout that draft, right? Uh, some, some questions of exactly what was going to happen with this Io as they started picking through their heroes. You weren't exactly sure where he was going to wind up. Is he going to be the core? Is he going to be the support? It was kind of sketchy throughout it, but then with that final pick in the Earthshaker, they did fully confirm uh, that it would be this core Io once again. And you heard Sunbi say after their first game earlier today while they were playing it, he just said, uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, Nisha. He can play it, so we play it. Totally. <laughs> very, very firm response. I mean, that's the thing, right? Is like, it sometimes just comes down to that. The player feeling confident on a particular hero saying, I can do this, I can win for my team, understanding the matchup and making it happen. Uh, you can see already 79% win rate here at this tournament for the IO. That is absolutely insane. I own Alchemist. Whew. I, uh, I don't know. I'm, I look forward to seeing if someone can defeat it because for me, the, this core IO has just looked ridiculous. As far as I know, the core IO hasn't lost. It's yeah. only been support IO that's taken the, uh, the nose dives there, mostly with like IO Gyro and stuff, who isn't quite the same matchup it used to be. No, definitely not. And I think a lot of that comes down to the change of Aghanim Scepter talent. But, you know, these core players are saying, all right, let's just pick up that Aghanim Scepter, get ourselves farming away like crazy, and then eventually we're going to be able to take over this game. Uh, oftentimes, though, that does sort of go hand in hand with a lot of other heal, which is why you're seeing that Witch Doctor get taken here for the Voodoo Restoration later on, as well as the Omni Knight uh, having some more spam out there of the heals and status resistance and all that other good stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, we talked a lot about Secret Strap, but uh, on the side of Liquid too, I feel like I haven't seen GH play Earth Spirit in a, in a while. He was picking up at Epicenter, but at least I haven't caught any of his games here where he's been on the hero, but this is one of uh, one of his big ones, right? This is like his top three. I think he's even played it more than his Keeper of the Light, which is one of those like most iconic ones that you even think about when it comes to GH. So uh, the man's got a mean green machine and currently after Zai there, whoo, the blocks. See if they can get the run down, but it's not quite gonna happen. They have the split earth afterwards if they manage to hit it, but Zai just gets on his little tippy toes and walks away, ain't no problem. And uh, yeah, those tranquils do indeed get delivered to Yapsar in the mid lane, so Going to use that newfound speed to rotate around here. Uh, Weeha comes in with his other Meepo and able to try and scare some of those last hits. But so far, mid one 13 and 6. Just giving him the business here in the mid lane. And Arcane Orb trade off there as Yapsart moves into position. Oh. They killed off Zai elsewhere. Yeah, we were, we were watching mid, of course, because you can see they're obviously going for that gank. But looks like Zai goes down after salving back up. It only used one more tango, so I hadn't quite gotten back up to full HP there. And Miracle finds the kill with GH. Weeha definitely knows that Yapsor is over here. He has not shown back up one of the other lanes and can't anticipate that this movement is over from the Earth Shaker, but mid one not wanting to go for fear of reprisal. And Io up top. Yeah, kind of quite a bit of harass on him, but in the end, you uh, you have to get that like perfect chain stun lockdown happening there. As long as you know he has the tether up, there's not a whole lot you can do. Absolutely. Open up that ring of Silius as well as Yaps are again going to make this move up here towards the north. The pull gets off and Yaps are trying to make things happen. Was able to get that early kill, but now kind of just regulated to running around with Tranquils trying to make stuff happen. Yeah, he's going to check the rune. Uh, GH rolled all the way home. And so he's now going to TP back down to the bottom shrine and then roll to check the bottom rune. And the 50-50 coin flip goes the way of Yapsor. Secures a haste rune in the top and immediately starts rushing his way there. Pretty fearsome trio. He wants to try and find something. Could be nice for him. Already getting the spirits rolling, but he's heading back towards mid again. So yeah. It looks like he's trying to find Kuro, right? He's checking inside that Radiant Jungle. He's like, are there stacks in here? What are they doing? But Kuro, well, he's in the Dire Jungle and he is actually spotted by an Observer Ward, so they do know that he's up here. Yeah. Soaking up some of that experience. Kuro already level three on the Chen. Off to a hot start, has that headdress as well. So he is pretty farmed. And right now it's mainly just Yapsor that's sitting bottom of the pack in terms of levels. Just level one still. And you're gonna have mid one takeover in terms of the net worth. I know the last hits are back and forth, but you've got yourself a Meepo who's uh, in the jungle, right? So as much as we see the last hits being close, you know that you're getting more when you're uh, getting those lane creeps as long as the numbers are even. The problem is soon the numbers unlikely to be even, right? Uh, great denies there for mid one to try and slow down the XP gain of the Meepo, which is always important, but it's uh, it's Meepo time. He's already stacking camps right now in that jungle. And that's why you see the trade off there of three bounty runes uh, over as well for just the one. Um, of Secret. More emphasis on the lanes, it feels like, for Team Secret, while Liquid taking advantage of the other resources around the map. 
And Mind Control level four, the first wave of catapults coming in, and Chen in the area. They feel like they can get a little he's, bit aggro. He's putting a message down. <laughs> Observer warning. <laughs> We're going to be busy up here. Uh, that's yeah. what that says. Oh, in the meantime, though, tethered up with Puppy. They're not really that afraid, and the overcharge comes out. While the cast bounce hits onto a creep. Very long timer on the stun for that one. And again, relatively so sart. Does he feel like you need to get a lot done with the Chen early on at this point in time? Uh, I would say it's almost like uh, the three heroes almost feel that pressure of the Earthshaker, the, the Earth Spirit, as well as the Chen, right? Which Doctor, sitting in lane, feels good. That's right. what you do. Keep my carry oh. going. But these other heroes, like, you, you almost, you feel like you have this potential, you yeah. know? So when I'm not making these big plays, I, I get a little bit dismayed. I don't know if they are right now, but uh, they understand their game plan right there. Most likely playing for that 10-minute mark where we have the double tone come out. There's not as many concerns as there used to be for getting that XP with a double tone for supports like this. So uh, probably just going to be a little bit of a slow one here as Meepo, at least because of that, is going to get a lot of space to farm in the jungle. And you did see no boots built for Weeha going for the quad Wraith fans, picking up one of those couriers since they did have the ward spotting out the direction of their jungle. And still only 200 gold behind the OD after this laning stage. Yep. So what I do like about the Shaker versus the Meepo in this sort of a matchup, though, will be if he can just get a Fisher block onto the Meepo and just give, like, a little bit of space to the OD, that Sandy's is still going to be big, right? Okay. we talk about, like, Meepo still does buy a bunch of stats, sure. But he mostly buys that, you know? <laughs> Maybe the Scythe and Savvy, you get a couple, a little bit of int here and there, but you're, you're stacking quad rate bands right now. So there is a chance that Midwon gets those big items that he can still blow them up. But the problem is if Meepo gets the initiation, that's... It's gonna be bad news bears. Yeah, particularly around like that hex timing or whatever. And Weeha's completely been obstructed so far, it feels like. Mind control still sitting back, can hold on to this lane, keep it under pressure and make sure that they don't get too much onto the tower as Kuro in a little bit of trouble with the Maledict down, the paralyzing cask as well. Chase comes with the heal. Good fissure to interrupt. They still try and run him down, but they pulled in Miracle, and that's gonna be enough to find the kill on the puppy. Though Kuro will fall, both captains go down. Yeah, good fisher there to uh cause the balls to just kinda like stack up like that, right? It was like bam, bam, bam. Yeah. Clapped it onto a couple of them there with the help of the Maledict. Another nice part of that Chen, of course, is the ability to pull in heroes. And well, Puppy, you came to the wrong neighborhood, mister. It's Guys, uh, just going to run at him. They might have a ward. <laughs> <laughs> just throwing it out there. It was nighttime, so I think he thought he was safe from the creep vision. And uh, instantly punished there. So that's going to be some tower pressure. And they do have BSJ's boy in the dead lane. It's the tide. I mean, you plant this guy there. Most dangerous part of the map. That's where teams maybe like to rotate down, trade that tower. Tide, he's gonna be okay. Yeah. He can set up the counter rotation because you're using that Chen, like you pointed out, to bring a hero in. What does that mean? That hero still has a teleportation scroll. So you try and go on this Tide Hunter, he gets that Kraken off, and suddenly, release the Kraken. <laughs> Y'all get comboed by his allies TPing in. It. <laughs> release the Kraken indeed. Ravage, obviously a terrifying ability at these early goings. Kuro can do that pull in if they need to, if they want to defend that tier one tower. But for now, at least, Liquid just going for a little bit of an invade in the jungles. They find Nietzsche coming back in. Oh, he's slippery. With that relocate, and now the chase down coming from Zai as they look to find follow this one. Paralyzing Cast only going to connect on the Miracle, but that might be enough because, well, the rest of Secret is here. Yeah. And they kill him off. Close. Close to find that kill on the Nisha. Just uh, not able. He, like, tried to next level the play, I think, with the Split Earth. The Nisha just went, like, right towards the Leshrac thinking hopefully he doesn't stomp his own feet. So they instantly deward the Observer that was there to try and keep an eye on Nisha farming because they know how the strategy works. They've seen several teams do it. He just wants to be in this little triangle or, well, I guess it's, it's quad. Uh, of course, we usually think of the triangle down here. Right. This can be a uh, rhombus or something. I don't know. I need some geometry classes. But either way, Pull that's where he's going to be. Absolutely. Trapezoid. I think it's a trapezoid. I'm going to go so with good. that. You're so good at math. Thank you. I'm a geography, which is very close to sounding like geology. Wait, what? You're That's not it. the right one either. It's beautiful. Geometry. I knew I had it. So uh, three to three so far. It is kind of an interesting little dynamic too, using that relocate to be able to get back to base, pick up some more items. Um, of course, now Nisha having that completed Helm of the Dominator, he's just going to start running around <laughs> and finding GH. Pearl Boulder not going to quite get there in time to interrupt, but it will still punch. What a strat. Anna, what have you done? I mean, this mud golem is just hoofing it. Look at him go. He's a monster. It's a terrifying, terrifying. It, it kind of looks like Slacks when he's late to a segment. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty much how he runs around the arena. You're not wrong. 
Oh, God. Well, already the Kaya completed now for the OD. Miracle in the mid lane, trying to push this one out another time. And again, you look at this lineup, wanting to make stuff happen early. You've got the four points up in Diabolkidic. You've got the Chen creeps there to help soak up damage as they are going to rotate now. Yeah, move Zai into the area, and that kind of puts the kibosh on the pressure. Well, I feel like Zai's been playing down there for a long time, too, with mid one, right? Where they were maybe hoping to force this tower, couldn't find anything up top. Now Puppy forced the toss of the Maledict. A little bit of a net moving in. They will finally collapse there onto the Witch Doctor, who will just get dropped. Weeha finding the final touch. And they're still pressuring mid. I mean, they're grabbing a kill up top, but it's not necessarily slowing down the rest of Liquid. They are keeping that Edict pressure on. They say, bring all of your heroes, and we're not stopping. Moving in for it. Do they get the deny? At the very least, they will. Omni Knight side makes it happen. Now the Magnetize on his Oh, GA. Do the Heavenly Grace, but mid one just drops. They find the kill, and now Zai trying to turn this one back around. Miracle is still living with a decent mana pool. Echo Slim connecting, but it's not enough damage. Weeha lives through it. They roll through again, and Liquid making it happen. They take down Yapsor as well, possibly running through the trees. Trying to run away. They know he's in there. And the net's eventually going to find the kill. So GH winds up with the double kill as he takes Zion. Yapsor Kuro gets the kill onto mid one. And uh, Weehaw takes the kill on the Puppy. So Seeker dropping all over the map. And hey, you know, not even just tier one tower damage. They're going to take some damage onto tier two. I mean, this is. And, hello? Uh, Anybody? This damage coming out from Meepo at this stage of the game. They just use Echo Slam. This is 11 minutes now as they pressure onto this tier two tower. I mean, my control's still sitting here with Ravage. Haven't had to use it. They know there's no sanities. The net. This Zai's is looking like there. some Alchemist Dota. It is a monster. They just take that tower back out afterwards. Oh, pressure on Yapsor, I think, this game to try and get that blink. I mean, the blink's not an end-all, be-all sort of an item here, of course, versus the Meepo. You still need a lot of follow-up damage, but he is racing towards it already up to 1,250 gold. I mean, in a way, it just feels like the bigger thing he needs, too, is just levels. Like, getting up to that level two Echo, if at all possible, which is obviously a far way away. He's the lowest level in the game, though. You just don't have the control or the damage to deal with it. And another tower taken. I feel like for I Liquid. see a bunch of Liquid gather around a tower, and it falls, and then instantly they're just somewhere else. Yeah. Right? This Chen, he still has Divine Favor ready for any of these Meepos if he needs it. GH is actually going to TP top to try and support Weehaw, but he doesn't even need it. He just solo killed Nisha. Dude, this is... That's that's a lot of gold. This is disgusting. <laughs> They're just running it over and over. And again, this is before that first big item comes from Weah. When you get the E-Blade, the amount of damage that you pick up on it is absurd. I am definitely a big fan of the uh, position one flesh racks. I mean, that China's been doing quite a bit over the past couple months, right? They love to flex this hero across all the roles and all the lanes. I mean, this guy, probably the only true hero I feel like that can be played one to five right now. Mm. And it feels good to me. It just the ability to pressure like this and just take down towers with such ease gives you so much strength into that mid game if you can keep it. Fissure for what? As Liquid take a 5,000 gold lead at 13 and a half minutes. They have not taken their foot off the pedal and Secret have not come up with an answer. Well, now the question becomes, where do you go from here? Possibly up towards that tier one tower, I guess, invade the jungle. Do you need to set up Ferocious early? Right, well, we're, we're <laughs> what the hell do you do? Now, Secret, they they know. They've seen the Io, right? Okay. We, we've had games exactly like this. The first games that the carry Io came out, I heard Grant and Kyle and BSJ, and they're just like, guys, they're really losing with this core Io. When is, how does this thing work? And uh, well, eventually it kicked into place, right? And just get the level 15 talent. Once you have the Aghanim Scepter, those are massive tools to actually get some damage out from this hero. So Secret, they're trying to get there as fast as they can. Taking away this space is super important because uh, knocking down towers makes it harder for Nisha to farm. So that's partly why he's so far down on the net worth chart. This is so important right here as well. Yeah, Moving I've, in and taking the first Roshan. There's no way they're getting in on this one. I mean, the Meepo being able to pick up this Aegis is just so key. And actually, Puppy might just die. He's getting hit by an illusion. You can poof onto those afterwards as Puppy going to get controlled up for the moment as GH still has him in his sights and they're going to be able to poof in afterwards if they want. Yeah. As Roche already goes down, Weeha finds Puppy. And now an Aegis, an E-Blade, Weeha is doing whatever he damn pleases. All right, so E-Blade, this game, what do we have? Yapsor, oh, he's still 400 gold away-ish from that Blink Dagger. So Planetfall, gonna have to figure it out pretty soon here. 
They want to stay in this one. Mid one's BKB. Going to be a good tool to try and actually fight into these engagements. He's still going to be backed up by Zai there on the Omni. He's trying to split push, get away from this. But you can see, I mean, I think 37% is a little generous considering, like, the pace at which Liquid are going. But that's basically the idea of respecting the, the high ground, right? It is, yeah. it is hard to go high ground versus some of these heroes. Uh, I mean, but mostly it's just hard to uh, not give away big streaks as Zai. I mean, I mean, look at this damage that comes out. He's just going to get rooted afterwards. They have the E-Blade there, continuing to control this Omni Knight as he tries to hide away. And, uh, I don't think that this Juke is eventually going to work as they find Zai and kill him off. I mean, right now, the Meepo has 150 damage base. That's more than any of the heroes on Secret. And he's got a bunch of them. <laughs> he's got more than a few, Trent. Yeah, he's got a whole crew. Oh, the whole crew also going to run in the mid one here. Who it's oh, not that God, BKB. not again. Mid one trying to run. Mind control. He can chase down with the Ravage if he wants to. He knows there's no Astral. Mid one in a pickle as they run him down. Ravage going to be used. Split Earth afterwards. This is destruction. I am a fan of that Ravage. Don't give him any opportunity for some big sanities on you because you got 27 int right now. No thanks. Finish it off, set up the Split Earth easy, take us high ground, and you know that guy's going for a BKB. He just bought out. They are owning and taking down the Tier 3 tower. Nisha just hoping to try and hold off, if at all possible, still 500 gold away from that Aghanim Scepter on the IO as Liquid hit their timing just that much harder. Wow, I can't wait secret. to see how strong IO Aghanim's is. Because if it can bring <laughs> you back from this, it is truly busted. And they're trying, they're hoping. They're waiting. Creeps are coming in in just a moment, and Weeha still holding on, not at all afraid. I mean, Nisha is relocating the farm waves. Okay, the Fissure already thrown out. They used the Death Lord, but there's nothing there for the follow-up. Astral used as well. Now mid one in a lot of trouble. Is there healing back up from the Ransack? They're not doing enough damage. Is it quite enough? They can't even kill him off once. Hand of God comes out. Secret is getting completely run right, over the here. balls are online. Are you kidding me? Possibly, they, they need it. They need it right now more than anything. The roll through as well. Sai, they try to take down Mia. He is gonna pop. But in the meantime, Secret now. Can you kill him a second time? Round two, ding, ding, ding. And Secret not ready for the fight. He's trying to drive them back, but indeed they will have to just give up that mid lane of Rax. Zai gets the deny at least. Some small solace. Oh, Liquid? Oh, okay. I like this. They, they want to test it themselves, I think. All right. How good is this thing? You know, what can Nisha really do here? They don't have Ravage. They do have the pipe, though, on my control. And I believe, as you saw earlier in the, the IO game, it was about 90% of the damage from Nisha was magical. It's a scary moment. They're scouting with that Helm Creep. And again, how often have we seen teams fall to the high ground push? Well, they didn't fall that time. That's for sure. Enough. But there will be some more high ground pushes out here from Liquid. And I think that's why you see Liquid hold back there. You know, wait for your next round of items to come online. They've already got a 10,000 gold lead. They've got the Aegis a while ago. They're ready to go again. Yeah, next big items will be the BKB for Miracle. So he can try and play up in the fights alongside uh, Weeha, who is going for that Scotty to give him some more balanced stats here. Uh-oh. Mr. Zai. They don't quite catch him, but Weeha now spots him out, and the Root's going to be there. Zai is also going to be in trouble as they will just beat him down into the ground. Team Secret just getting rolled on by GH and Liquid as a whole. They came to play today. Oh, they did indeed. Is Nisha still just struggling? I mean, he's the he's the big thing, right? You, you oh, just yeah. want to see, can he get to 15? Can he add that, that uh, additional Spirits damage there? going to be a grind, but it does feel like this possibly could be the answer for the IO draft. <laughs> oh, just play Meepos? <laughs> <laughs> just hit harder. <laughs> play play faster is certainly, uh, I think that's what we saw tried earlier today too, right? Yeah. Well, actually, that's not true. I thought they were going to try and play faster, and then they last picked a Medusa, so uh, that, that was not what was attempted by BG Gaming. Liquid kind of flipping that last pick here with the Meepo instead, and indeed playing very fast. I mean, they kind of telegraphed it even with the Leshrac and the Chen, right? If you, kn you knew what was coming here. No no surprises for Team Secret. Well, right now, Io about 800 experience away from getting that level 15 talent, and he is going to TP back now to try and help There's a Tome in the base. I think grounds. it's his. Yeah, that's what that's going to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Puppy, oh, Puppy even buys for him. Wow. The support life, I tell you, in a pro game is really rough. I mean, you got to do what you got to do, right? And this game, very emblematic of things being rough. 
Well, well, I mean, does, does it really even make that much of a difference I, right I don't now? know. I want to say no, but yeah. I don't want to doubt this thing anymore. You've been burned one too many times <laughs> no. by the core IO. I mean, it's a Scotty done on Weeha right now. He is so far ahead. Another 5,000 gold item above the next core on Team Secret. There's just really big timings coming up, right? The BKB, the next Aegis, all of that should be coming together for Liquid. I don't think anything in that same window will be as powerful for Secret now the Iowa's already reached level 15. Right. So if you're Liquid, you just hold out, control the plateau, keep both those mid and top lanes going in your favor, control Secret, use the, the lanes for information, as well as these great wards, by the way, that are just outside the, uh, the Secret base, right? It is spotting exactly what they're trying to do. They know when they're going up to uh, up top of the farm. You can see they're trying to de-ward right now from Secret. Maybe wondering exactly how Liquid know what they're doing. Yeah. I mean, you need to just try and re-establish map vision, if at all possible. But so tough to make happen against oh, this man. lineup. And uh, yeah, Miracle nearly into that BKB. Mind Control now with the Blink Dagger there too on that Tide Hunter, And even GH has almost completed his BKB. Yeah, this is terrifying. They, they have it on the OD, like we are talking about, but it doesn't feel like it's really going to be enough at this point. They need the Sanity's Eclipse to be huge. The App Store is getting closer to that level 12, which again could make a bit of a difference, but that's predicated upon Meepo being in a position where he's yeah. going to get echoed poorly. I mean, for reference, he's got, what, 100? He's got 112 uh, in there. Quick right. maths, Twice. no problem. On the OD, and our Meepo's way up there. He's at 91. So it's me, like Sandy's does nothing to me. Yeah. Is the point we're at here with all these, like it's little bits of int all the way, but it's still a lot more than most heroes get, especially most agile heroes, right? Yeah. Well, and now the one plus side of this, if your team's secret- You found place, a plus side, this I'm excited for. So oftentimes, you know, BKBs, they get countered by the Earthshaker because he's got that instant initiation. And now speaking of which, he has to start back behind. He can jump in if he wants to, thinking about it. Be sure to open up GH, the Echo Slam. Is it quite gonna be enough? They have the Ravage to try and turn it. We have so freaking low, but not looking quite low enough. They do manage to kill him off, but they lose the Earthshaker and the IO mid one, falling low. The Hilt Stomp, it connects as well, as they all are getting torn apart. Nisha ended up buying back into this fight, and Miracle trying to take him down. Is it gonna oh, be quite eggs. enough? You will Scepter lift up at the very last second to keep Miracle alive. Puppy wanting to take down the mid from Liquid, and he does die to the Maledict. Three gone. Zai, the last one left alive, but the buyback comes. They know there are buybacks coming from Secret. Jeez, Puppy played his hard on that fight. He actually did so much damage on the Witch Doctor. 4,798. He was only second to the OD. And now the jump forward looking for a bit more. They've gone a bit too far, though. There's a Fissure to open it up. They find the Rolling Boulder stun I forward. and They can't run. do it again. It's too much. It's far too much. Weeha taking a lot of damage. He's the got 27. They tried to work, but it's not quite there. Yapsor needs another Fissure. The chase forward looking for the finish. And my man mid one with one last Astral desperately oh. trying to hold on. He's, he does manage to get the walk away again, but the roots there turn around the BKB. He's actually looking through this one. Mid one, can he do it? The right click's coming through. It's all too much damage. And Weeha can just walk away again. It is very cathartic to watch this IO strat be defeated by a Meepo with 30 HP regen. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I, they just don't have the damage. If they don't have all of their tools available, there's no way they're gonna kill him. And so you just see this Meepo living with the divine favor, and I'm like, you know what? It's a little gross, but I can live with that. <laughs> if it's versus the IO, because that has been the bread and butter of this strat, getting the IO to that ridiculous agony and then buffing someone up to a degree where they're just un killable and right now needing to come up with an answer to their own team secret liquid just gonna run into the pit and try and finish off Roshan in the meantime Nisha can go for some split push plays with the relocate but this is another Aegis and out cheese on liquid as they find Yapsor the one hero that was supposed to be a solace for them but is not as Miracle pops the BKB and is just gonna walk at him Secret don't really have an answer as they chase forward, find the splitter there, a quick jump in for the save coming from Nisha. As they get the fissure, the follow-up is there, a lot of damage onto Mind Control, who is starting to drop with that Maledict down, might be enough for the Miracle, also very fall forward, they do manage to bring down the lag. It looks like MC will get out, oh, Pearl's found. Okay, All another right. follow-up. They found themselves a fight without their Meepo, perhaps a Liquid just a bit too ahead of themselves there, going for some kills. 
course, they do also have plenty of time left on this Aegis and Cheese, and uh, you could even argue these guys are up there just ensuring that nothing was going to be interfering at the same time. So, not not the worst for Liquid. Still, obviously, a gargantuan lead, but it is some solace for, uh, for Secret to get a couple of kills here and know that they can bring down these heroes surrounding the Meepo. One again, it, it, it was a buyback that came earlier from the Meepo where they didn't manage to get the other set of racks. So, possibly a way that yeah. you could see a path to victory with Secret having all of their abilities up. But again, there's a tier one tower mid. It's, it's just so hard to keep the pressure on. and So you don't have to kill him four times. Yeah, there you go. Oh, okay, he's passed off the cheese to Mind Control. So there you go. So Mind Control just making sure that he won't have any mana issues with the Sanities, I would uh, reckon is one of the big reasons for this. He's even got a mango now. Mind Control's got the big brain plays here. The watermelon, the mangoes, keeping a healthy diet for himself. Mm. And uh, there is a smoke here from GH2 as they push out the lane. So, yeah, they're going to pop that. Head towards the Dire Jungle. Let's see what they can do. Liquid, at this point in time, wanting to hit Secret where it hurts and see if they can get that second set of racks. Miracle in his uh, natural habitat here, lying in wait. <laughs> See if someone wants to poke at this wave and give them the old Yules. Puppy walking around just cool as a cucumber. I would not be that cavalier with my movement if I was in this game, but... Well, the jump forward, and that's why Ravage connects onto all of them. They are going to be able to find the silence afterwards onto Zai, so no hope for a save. GA comes out finally as they try and get a turnaround. Roll forward coming from GA to control the rest of the fight. The E-Blade is there to make sure that none of the Meepos go down. Zai is control. Liquid still running forward. A buyback comes from the Witch Doctor. But with no OD, Liquid have a path towards victory here. So yeah. They're going to take down another set of racks. Get your IO strat out of my game. OD, oh my no God. buyback. Weeha, everything. Again. Find it everywhere you want. An ultra kill for Weeha, who continues to just run ransack through this game. They're going to give him the rampage. No, stolen away by Miracle. He has to take one for himself this time around as Liquid do not look faced in the least bit. No buybacks on any of these heroes. This is only Nisha and Yapsor left to defend. Tier 4 towers being assaulted. Ladies and gentlemen, stick a fork in him, because at least for this game, Secret are looking done, as GG is called. My god, that was dominant. Team Liquid. I can tell you, there is nothing we have wanted to do more, I'm sure, than play Meepo on this stage. <laughs> <laughs> Brought back here again from the Shanghai Major. The last time he was up here and competing. And finds himself a, another victory. Liquid remaining undefeated as they move throughout the lower bracket. I mean, that's really one of the craziest stories ever. Could you imagine <laughs> the run? You think back again to this team's TI7 run, and it was the same type of thing, being dropped down so early on in the bracket and making that amazing run, and here even more so. It's, uh, it's impressive to try and handicap yourself one round further. <laughs> I have to give them credit. It does explain those group stage games. Absolutely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see what happens in game number two. But first, we've got to head back to Shiva and the panel, see what they thought about that game number one. Yes, thank you very much, Trent and Lyrical. What a dominant performance from Team Liquid in game number one of this best of three series. The winner will move on to be in the top three and, of course, in the lower bracket finals tomorrow. Loser will be eliminated fourth place. And before, I'm going to let you guys break down the game and talk about these two teams. What are you doing? Oh, you're, I'm, I'm petting oh. Mind Control's head. He did a good job. Oh, okay, great. Uh, I'm actually <laughs> looking forward to hearing what the draft panel thought on that first game. Hey, Kev. Hey, so what was really important is that if you're trying to beat the IO, what you need to do is make the game accelerate in a big way and prevent him from getting gold. So what ended up happening was in this first team fight at the seven minute mark, uh, Kuro here on the uh, on the Chen ended up teleporting in. Lash Lush is going to appear right here in a second, so keep an eye out for him. He pops in. He's now level six coming from the safe lane. He had a lot of golden experience that he got from being in a dual lane where he got to pressure the Omni. And after he got that rotation kill, he instantly starts pressuring the lane, which is really effective. And more importantly, he rotates around. Puppy TPs back in and gets killed instantly. So not only did he rotate into this lane, but he also set tempo by killing him and killing this tower immediately afterwards. That's a huge advantage because now they can move through the jungle. And with this jungle pressure, if you take a look over here, we ended up seeing a relocate coming from the IO. So what they're looking to do is trying to see which of these camps IO ends up coming back into. Where The place that he ended up coming back to was over here. Miracle missed a crucial stun, but 
he instantly comes back from Fountain and he's already at like 40% health, which is going to decrease his farm speed. And he ends up dying in this, but it's still very good because if you look on the map, everybody else on Liquid is still farming. They're getting their gold and that's going to help them stay ahead of the IO. And now once he teleports back in, he's just running between the mid lane into the jungle to spot for the IO. They don't want to let him get any gold and he wants to keep putting Diabolic Edicts on this mid tower. So he keeps doing that and that's going to force secret rotations. At the end of this clip, the, uh, uh, the Omni Knight ends up having to teleport here and they use their Glyph. So, in the next rotation over, look how many heroes are here. It's Miracle, and it's a support. And when this fight starts, Meepo TPs. They're doing this tower push, and they kill the tower with just two heroes. It ends up going well for them. They kill the OD, and now they're just in a rundown situation. So they end up staying ahead, killing all the outer towers, and that means that the IO just doesn't have a place on the map to farm. And that's why he wasn't able to snowball this game. Yep. And the draft utilizes gold so efficiently. They're going high ground at 18 minutes. There's no ags on the Wisp. They have a pipe, they have a mech. Meepo has three Wraith brands and an E-Blade. It's about as if, like, as far as peaking at a certain timing, the entire Liquid Draft is built to crush by 20 minutes, and that's exactly what they did. You can also see by Miracle's playstyle, they understand the Wisp a little. A lot of teams are kind of using the Wisp on Dire a lot better than Radiant because of how the jungle works with Spirits. You can pull two large camps much easier. So he, since he's a Radiant, he's playing in the Dire jungle and stopping him from farming. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's uh, why they won the game. Let's send that back over to Sheever. All right, thank you guys. Indeed, that IO did not work out the way that Team Secret was expecting to. And uh, I mean, we talk a lot about the IO and we talk about the Chen. Uh, Weeha's Meepo definitely showed yeah. up on the main stage there too. And again, it was Weeha that got kicked right after the Shanghai Major. We haven't really mentioned that, but there's you know a little bit of beef there too. He got kicked right after winning the Shanghai Major, and apparently it was a it was a rough one because it was two days or something before yep. roster lock, and Weha was forced to join a misfits team of leftovers that, by the way, ended up coming second at the international. Not I feel bad. like there's a tra trend here too, yep, right? people getting kicked and uh, or left to, out to dry. But a great performance by him, 12, 2, and 7 there, as you can see on his uh, KDA. Yeah, and I just love, like, how they did the lanes, right? Because usually you think that, oh, the five's going to go bottom, the four's going to go top. You had the Lesh Earth Spirit bottom, so you had kill potential. You had the Chen up top, so you, who went early head draft, no boots. So Tidehunter wasn't taking any damage because he always had the Ice Ogre. They just won both side lanes because they laned it perfectly. And I'm glad we get a chance to really highlight Weeha's play in this, uh, just because, you know, he's a player that uh, has had his moments of brilliance, and then, like, especially with Digital Chaos and what happened afterwards, people may have assumed that, like, oh, that was, like, a one-hit wonder. This sort of mid-players are going to be able to come back into the Tier 1 scene again. But Blitz, you got a lot of opportunity with him. Uh, he can be kind of stubborn in his ideas about Dota, right? Oh, yeah. He's maybe the most stubborn person I've ever met in my entire life. Like, he doesn't none. look stubborn. No, he stubborn. is. He is. Uh, <laughs> one time we did a scrim, and I was like, uh, uh, Misery was like, you got to talk to this boy. Like, I can't I can't handle it right now. So he just leaves the room. And so I, I, I come to me, I was like, let's go outside and chat. And I was like, you know what you did was wrong. Here's what he did. He bet a Midas on Quap. He died solo, and then he left the game <laughs> in the middle of a scrim. We're like, I was like, you know you can't do that, right? I was like, it's not good. And he's like, I know it's not good, but if you tell me it's not good, I'll think it's good. And I was like, what the hell kind of logic is that? No, and he no. said, my father's the same way. You see that car right there? It's red. If you tell me it's red, it's blue. 100%. That was the analogy he used. He refuses. If he thinks one way of Dota, he's going to, no matter what, you will not break his logic. You think it changes now, though, that no. he's on a team with Kuro? <laughs> no. You really don't think it changes? He just told me that the car was blue. It was like a red Toyota. Like, you think that this guy cares? Apparently not. The reality it's doesn't working. matter. So, yeah, like, so surely somebody else's opinion. He has about to come. Dota. To, he has to come to the conclusion first. Is what okay. I learned. You you can like sort of guide him and trick him in a little bit of a way. Yeah. Like I just started straight up lying to him. <laughs> but uh, like you can get him there. Well, it feels like Kuro. You know, he's he's guided him to the right yeah. place, right? He's in the right mindset. He he's lucky. He's yeah. uh, happy. I mean, they talked about it, right? He wanted that pure mid player, a player yes. who plays these like these broods and the, these meepos. They just got a pretty much free game because it's Weeha instead of, of Matu. Yeah, and that was only game one. Now, I do think that this is one of the strats that, you know, Secret wanted to try out once, and I don't think they're going to see it again. It's one of the strats that OG has tried a lot, and everybody has tried to theorize, like, what do you do against this IO core? Like, we thought about it executed as plan or strategy and you know here we go so i'm thinking team secret is going to come with something different for the next game oh yeah absolutely i, I also don't think they're going to give uh we have the opportunity to get that meepo mm -hmm. as well towards yeah. the end of the draft uh, even if they have an earth shaker like the support earth shaker is going to be good enough i thought there was a chance they might have actually switched over to core shaker just to try and address the meepo a little bit better but that wasn't the case and uh now liquid 
just one game away from eliminating Secret like they've done so many times in the past. Time. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what happened yeah. between Puppy and Kuro, but maybe Kuro right. is holding still a bit of a grudge. He, I think, I think he might be, but we're going to take a short break because the International is full of surprises. We got another one for you. Special announcement coming up. Long have my celestial brothers beckoned. But I am for the blindness of the mortal plane. From the void, nothing escapes my notice. No secret lies beyond my grasp. Yet, soon I must finally step from my hidden bastion. To wage battle alongside my brothers and save them for a greater cause to come. Void Spirit and uh, the rumors were true. Everybody was already saying, you know, at the start of the opening ceremony of TI, we saw the, the four colors and it's like, well, we understand green, blue and red. But what's that purple doing there? And the rumors are true. I'm happy. And it looks like he can teleport. I'm, I'm uh -huh, speculating. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I felt like he can not, maybe not necessarily teleport, but like go into another plane. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What, do you, what do you guys got? I, honestly, I can't wait for another uh, spirit that's better than Storm. So uh, <laughs> it's been a great sure. four. It's been a great four well, years. Let me just got. say, <laughs> let me just uh, throw that one out there. Now nah, it looks like it has some. You know, usually when you have like a weapon like PL or something, you're going to be a carry hero. So you know, it all carries out there. Who knows? It's looking good for you though. It's, possibly. It's, I, I have heard a lot of carry players complaining that uh, none of the they new heroes love. have. Yeah, none of the new heroes have been going their way. So. I think they, is that the voice actor? I think the Chinese stream actually has the voice actor for I the think, Void Spirit. I think you might be right. Uh, yeah, cool. there was some, some question marks Sorry. there, but yes. Um, <laughs> and we have Cap. I think it, hey. you know, it would be making I'm the sense. Void Spirit. <laughs> you got a core and a support. You know, you got Snapfire sure. and Void Spirit. What do you think of the name Void Spirit? Storm Spirit, Ember Spirit, Earth Spirit, Void Spirit. Are you, are, uh, Grant, I know you're a lore master. Indeed. What, what exactly <laughs> is the Void? Ah, uh, the Void. It is a dark temporal plane that many of us human beings cannot mm -hmm. go to. Mm -hmm. Ah, ah, okay. So so what is he doing in, in the Void? What, what kind of things are there? I mean, just like every human, he has to eat food, right? He's got an okay. oven, he bakes some cookies, lives <laughs> okay. the good life out there. You know, it's, just like, it's a normal guy. He's just a normal guy in a, a different realm of go, reality. Get away from okay. me, Cap. <laughs> Ah, oh, I can't believe on TI main panel I got to talk to Grant about Slats his is gonna lore kill me. Ah, <laughs> uh, excellent. All right, uh, I'm sure that, that we'll learn more about yes. a voice spirit as the time goes on. But we got we got to focus on this matchup. Team Secret is on the verge of potentially getting eliminated here by Team Liquid if they lose the next game. It is one game between them and. Stuck sticking at fourth place, which you know, it's not actually all bad for Secret. I know it's sound, like they are they okay, they want to get number one, yeah. but Puppy has never been fourth in his life ever, ever not like he's been to every TI. <laughs> he's, been first, he's been second, he probably wants to keep he's it that been way. Then. Fifth and sixth, seventh, eighth, he's been last. But he's never been fourth or oh, third. Oh, yeah, that Boba, the Envy squad. Yeah. Yep. yeah. 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 <laughs> I always forget about that. I'm sure Puppy wishes yeah. we did, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure everybody Has on he ever been third? Wants... No. Are we including, like, 
DPC events and everything? Man, no, no, that's no, no, crazy. no, 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 no. I'm doing TIs, TIs, TIs only. TIs. Okay. I mean, he's been to a lot of TIs, so, yeah. you know. You know, a couple. A couple. I, I'm sure he would still rather take first or second over uh, this newly found fourth that he is just one step away from being. Mm. Yeah, and I mean, they he's got to switch it up. Because we saw, uh, if you haven't noticed, in pretty much every game today, first pick has been chosen by each team. Yeah. And I, I actually forgot who took the pick last time. But if you're not first pick, it feels like you're in a little bit of a deficit. All right. Guys, here come the teams out again, ready for game two, ready to battle Team Liquid. Team Secret, head to head in the main stage of the Mercedes-Benz Arena in Shanghai for the International 2019. Crowd cheering them on. And you know what? All games that we've seen from Liquid have been dominating for them. They have been crushing it. For Secret, it has been rough. Yeah. They have been behind. To be honest, they have had a large amount of comebacks in all the games they played. Yeah, you can't they, really plan for that, though. Like, that's not a good strat. They burned through their second and third and fourth chances long ago. They are a resilient team, at least. But uh, they got to come in with a winning strategy this time around. I think that's what's so scary about this TI is there's so many of these pickups like which. We saw LGD lose to the Alchemist Chen, right? We just saw uh, Secret losing to the Meepo. Like, there are so many, like, of these gotcha heroes. And that's the advantage of picking up Weeha, right? Is being able to yep. have access to even more of them. Yeah. What's going to change? I, is, it, is it all drafting? Because before the series started, I asked you guys, or I asked Grant, I asked you what's most important. You said timings is most important yep. when it comes to these two teams. And we saw the timings of Liquid were pretty... I mean, they're pretty fast. I, yeah, I think uh, Secret definitely wants to change it. I think they honestly look best when they have two to three Lake in here's right. They were first picking the Void. When they were doing stuff like that, you have an Earthshaker, you have this Enigma. You take it to the late game while still having an early game presence. I think that's best. And last game, you first pick an IO as well as an Omni. And it's like, you know, you're probably not going to have these late game team fights because you already have two of your cores in the first two. Yeah. You know, well, we also talked uh, earlier in this tournament, we talked about Royal Roaders. We gave it a name. Uh, that is everybody after TI3. Sorry, Alliance, Navi, and IG. Everybody after TI3 that has won an international in the first try. And there's not that many people. It was literally, it was Wings, GH, Sumail, and Thompson. Yes. Right? It is a rarefied list. Yes. Uh, now, there's only one potential Royal Roader left in the whole competition, and that's Nisha. That's this Nisha. is his first international. I feel like that's such a special thing. It is in like Korean esports yeah. to be one of one. That's where you're legendary. You did it in your first try. No one else will come after that like that. Uh, I mean, we have less than 10 people that have done that yeah. total. And that includes like that random wings thing, right? That they <laughs> yeah. kind of fill up the list right there. Uh, but Nisha, I, I feel like he's played very well at his first international. Definitely has played at a top four level. What I actually think they need to change is they need to figure out a way to enable mid one. I think that's something that Liquid did really well in that draft. They took away the potential for him to carry. They made it so that when they took the Meepo, it was like the OD is not going to be a factor in the game. He can't Astral yeah. dodge it out. Uh, when you BKB, he just gets on top of you and hits you. He doesn't really care about that in steal. They need to figure out a better way to get this guy online. He is, for the large part of Secret's run, he's been their superstar, and they need to let that show. Yeah. He didn't even have that bad of a lane, right? But it's just the matchup in the game. Like, mid one showed he could play that. And then the problem is you die once at that middle tower. Your game's just over right there. Even like the status resistance of the Omni Knight, yeah. which is supposed to yeah. be able to protect the OT against this Meepo who just gets in snare after in snare. It just doesn't feel like it actually does anything for you. Yeah, Nisha, oh, sorry, I made one. Uh, this is his fourth international, by the way. On his first international, he did end fourth. Uh, so he's already been at this result, and he hopes that he can improve it. But to do that, he needs to win the next game with his team. Let's find out what's going to happen in game two of Team Liquid versus Secret. Team Liquid versus Team Secret. Game two. Welcome back to the next draft here. It's going to be a huge game. This is really important for Secret, especially um, after that first game one defeat. How do they bounce back? Do they switch up their strategies? Dude, what do you, you are... I don't even know how to get into the draft yet because the emotions going into this, yeah. right? Nisha was not a Wisp player before this tournament. You've now given away a game, facing elimination, knowing in the back of your mind that last year, who knocked me out of TI? 
it was Liquid 2-0 over Secret. The year before that, Liquid not only won TI, but they beat Secret on the way, 2-1. You've been here before, and you failed, and now your back is against the wall. <sighs> I don't know. I, I think it comes down to this draft. The drafting at this TI, I think, is like one of the most complex, probably. Yeah. Of ma many, like, the most recent TIs. There's a lot of, on first pick, there's like, you know, two, three, four heroes that are game winning. Yeah. On 10th pick, there's two, three, four, five heroes that are game winning. So both side, like both first pick and second pick have advantages. Yeah. Both early picks and late picks have advantages. You have to pick your poison for both teams. I think the panel touched on something important where Liquid is consistently their last picking Wii's hero, yep. right? Secret, they keep going for Yap Source. Do you want to activate mid one here? Give him a chance to shine? I, I feel like that might be an answer. Well, Kyle, it was, it was pretty ironic uh, that they instantly picked Weeha's hero in the first pick. Miracle. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Miracle. Oh, okay. Well, right, right. They usually, Maybe. most teams have been running safely now. I think Miracle has played it on Liquid more than Weeha we, recently. But Weeha will play it. Weeha has played you can it. Say, you can say what you're going to say, Kyle. Well, you're always wrong. <laughs> is that what is that? Is that <laughs> Look, if there's a guy that can do it, all right, it's Puppy. The original Team Secret, right? You want to know something crazy? All five of those players, S4, Fly, No Tail, Puppy, and I'm missing one. Kuroki? Exactly, he's in the tournament there. Thanks, Gunner. What they all finished top six last TI, right? Yeah. At this tournament, they're all again top six. Three of them are captains of teams in the top four. That's like, pretty crazy. You, you can't lose another game, sure, but this is a good way to start it off. I think ET is probably the best hero uh, to early phase right now, especially for a team like Secret. Well, this is kind of reminiscent of the OG versus LGD series. Uh, OG was running Alchemist, and uh, on the other side, LGD grabbed uh, Elder Titan, and they grabbed a lot of magic damage heroes, including a fast building Veil Sand King. Do you think that kind of a draft was effective against the Alch? It, it seemed okay to me, but it is, is it going to work here? It was okay. I think Shadow Demon's better than anything else they can pick here. Uh, creating illusions of Alk in the mid game is decent, but it's more the W. Is it though? Because you don't get the radiance if you toggle it. You, you, didn't you test that? Yeah, but you do get his AC because usually the Alks go AC. Good point. So you can kind of counter his AC for the armor. So you can turn off radiance while you're disrupted. Yeah, so you if you, you, you spam it. If you it, spam it, you can get the tick right. Yeah, right before like, you pop it, out. It's yeah. the same mechanic as being able to BKB as you come down from a Yul's, as certain stuns gotcha. are underneath, like Ice Path, as an example. Yeah, you so can like BKB. for those. When you're in Yules, you're considered like a stun, so you can actually shift Q abilities. So yeah. You can just shift Q BKB, and it'll activate the tick before you're stunned. Correct, gotcha. and it's the same mechanic as you come out of disruption, the radiance is off. Gotcha. Well, they go with the Rubik instead, some good magic damage, Dude. a very early Dark Seer pick, and this is going to make Shadow Demon look a lot more appealing, but Secret's got both supports, so they don't even have yeah. to ban it. I love this pick. You know, we talk about Dark Seer being super weak in lane. Well, you've just shown a relatively weak support duo in terms of the ability to lock down and kill a Darkseer. And in addition, it's one of my favorite heroes against ET. When you get a wall illusion, you steal his natural sure. order. Yep. You now have what's arguably the best uh, um, ability in Elder Titan's kit that your team now possesses. Plus, you can avoid the stomp so easily. You're gonna have an Al How are you going to stomp an Alchemist running around at 700 move speed 15 minutes into the game? You're not. Well, one, one thing you can do, though, is you can delay his Radiance timing, right? OG had that advantage in a huge way. They got like a 10-minute Radiance. That way, when he was running them down mid, it was earlier than LG it was expected and could handle. So, hypothetically, pressure him in lane, delays Radiance timing, then yeah. maybe that first team fight doesn't hurt as bad. At the same time, we even saw in that series, LGD had a Shadow Demon, and his purge wasn't doing enough. He purged the Alk, and he kind of just walked slowly for five seconds, and then he gets surged after. Part of that was the LC, though, which was consistently cleansing off the Soul Catcher. Yeah. And it kind of removes the Even ability. Even in game one, they had Shattered Demon. True. It was, uh, but he was, the first fight, he was level five. Yeah. When the Alk first got his Radiance, because he didn't have his Tome delivered. I, that's why you're first picking the hero, right? That's actually kind of incredible. You have the core item necessary to go start winning the game, taking towers, farming everything, and the enemy support is not able to ult you. Yeah. That's, it, it was a really fast Radiance timing, by all means, though. So like Secret's going to ban the... Heroes like OG picked, right, with this Dark Seer? Yeah. The Ember is a classic one and Spear Breaker. They're both classic, I think. Uh, back when they first changed Charge to be like based on your actual movement speed, Spear Breaker Dark Seer is like super crazy. Your Spear Breaker would deal like 800 magic damage a charge, would, you know, deal 90 DPS a second. It was crazy. And now it's a little more balanced. So is this going to make sure that Dark Seer's lane is just not going to be as effective, basically? Not to mention like their mid game stuff? 
Yeah, it's the Spirit Breaker like helps the Darkseer because you have a tanky hero that will can help tank creeps because they nerf Darkseer's armor. And that's like the one thing they've been nerfing. It's just minus one armor, minus one armor, you know, minus a little health. But the Spirit Breaker has so much armor and HP that he can tank the creeps for you. It's, it's just concerning to me that Secret's draft right now has a significantly higher degree of execution required to win. You're facing elimination. You got to think about which team is more comfortable. Who has the easier time playing Dota? A lot of the games, especially at this level, with the stakes so high, is about feel. Liquid, you Ion Shell your Alchemist, you follow him into battle. You have Rasta as well now. Two easy point and click disables. Team Secret, you know, imagine playing Magnus in this game, Gunner. Like, so much stress, so much reliant upon you if you want to win your team the game. And same with an ET, you don't have these easy to land disables, a natural way of moving around the map early game to find kills. You're on the back foot, and Liquid once again have this ability to just hit 15 minutes and just go. Like, let's say theoretically they pick some, like, life stealer right here, mm -hmm. and they have a feeling they need to, like, R just RP this Alk and kill him, right? Same with the Wraith King, right? They want to just RP this Alk and kill him. They haven't even shown their five on Liquid. There's still an Oracle in the pool yep. for save. I think Shattered Demon's still in the pool yep. for save. They have like all these saves that they can pick as their five that's it's a, still in the pit. That's a great point because Secret right now, they need to burst someone. They, you need to kill the Alk yeah. to your point. If you just have a minor combo breaker and you can just negate the RP, negate the Earth Splitter, really any element of Secret's damage output, your Alchemist is going to survive. And then he's going to kill everyone. And a lot of skeletons for a lot of gold too. Yes. Which might be a nice advantage. But it's a great point. You get it double as well. When they respawn, you kill them again for the bonus 36. But on the bright side, Wraith King is going to give Teaker's Team Secret the ability to push towers and pressure. Well, similar to a Lash Track. Like, he can go... So Kanka, yeah, I was going to say, uh, they're going to pick Kanka. It to helps. With More so, it's for the RP. If he gets a boat during the RP, yep. your Alchemist isn't going to take damage. And your first life is trading for the Wraith King's life. Usually, yep. the Wraith King's first life is going to be for your BKBs and for like half your health and damage. But now his first life is like 20% of your health. You don't even have to BKB. Yeah. You're respawning and... 50% damage yeah. reduction for 12 seconds. Like I, I love it. 10 seconds. It's lower early. It's, it's like 40. Seconds. It's 40, 40 45, 50. Yeah. Still, it's, it's, it's a crap load for sure. Um, they don't... Uh, I guess and now, now that's like two frontliners too. Kunk is yeah. also free to go yeah. different item builds. He doesn't have to go the Radiance build. So he it, could go like Double Bracer Halberd really fast and be ready to fight. And Secret's lineup is... Uh, it's necessary that they have this 2-3 formation, in a sense, because you need to protect your Mag and your Rubik and your Elder Titan. You don't want to be in a scenario where they can immediately be jumped upon. And unfortunately, Liquid's draft is built to just get into the back lines. Alchemist, Kunkka, Darkseer, they welcome damage. And right now, Secret don't really have a proper damage soaker. Wraith King, in theory, is, but you're relying upon him to be doing the brunt of your damage. He's yeah. going to be empowered. He's going to be an ET. Like, your whole draft is built to get this Wraith King game. However, they will most likely be giving mid one overall last pick in this game. I think it's necessary, but man, it's going to have to be a hell of a hero. And another thing Secret's lacking is almost all the ET lineups we've seen today and yesterday were based on magic damage primarily. So Team Secret is like heavily into physical damage here between Empower, Wraith King, that kind of thing. So they have some magic damage, but it's going to be a lot harder for Elder Titan's aura to even do anything because he's got to get in melee range, which is more rare. That kind of, it feels bad they banned their own Ember, I think. I think this would have been a good Ember game for Secret. And yeah. this pick's really hard because, like, you kind of still want another Empower hero, preferably, like a melee hero, right? So it's like you think of like Monkey King as an example, yeah. right? But I don't think Monkey King is gonna do enough because if he ults on this Alk, he'll get searched out. Yeah, it's that's a great point, and another reason I think the Dark Seer first phase from Liquid is really intuitive. It's just it's just such a great combination too. It, it might have its weaknesses as a hero, but when you combine it with an Alchemist, it just it looks like broken. Honestly, I think this is. Arguably the strongest opener you can have right now in Dota. They, it, it, be, it becomes stronger because Team Secret shows their two supports, like you said earlier, right? Yeah. And the usual counters to the Stark Seer have been like Oracle for the lane. You, you can purge his Ion Shells. Yeah, Shadow supports. Demon for the mid game, right? For the purging of Ion Shell and Surge in the mid game. So you have these like support counters, and sometimes it's like carry counters, right? Like a Morphling is a counter because he'll completely free farm. But Morphling's mm -hmm. slightly fallen out of the meta. And you want an Earthshaker with it, right? And you can't really fit an Earthshaker in a secret draft. Yeah, and the Wyvern's perfect, right? It's the combo breaker you were looking for, but it's doubly effective. You can heal and put down, save uh, your Alchemist from any sort of physical damage, and you have a BKB piercing interrupt. Like, it's crazy strong here. The Bristleback, in theory, you get to a point with Secret's lineup, we'll win the game. But Liquid, they're not looking to take this late. They want to push the tempo and once again be threatening high ground by the 20-minute mark. 
This is a challenge for Secret and a situation, unfortunately, they've been in before. Uh, I love what Liquid's got. And on top of that, the Bristol's a lot of physical damage again. Similar damage types coming out of Secret's lineup. They've also got a save with the uh, Cold Embrace, so they have some solutions here with the Winter Wyvern ulti. I think the Wyvern pick was excellent. I did it's not see perfect. it coming. It's yeah. perfect. It's going to help against RP. You know, Even if the Wraithian goes BKB, you can stop him in his tracks, stop him from focusing this RP target, save your RP targets. It, there's a lot of stuff. I think it helps the lane as well. Yeah. You can just, you know, it, burn them down slowly, push it out for your Alk, you can jungle. You always are going to end up in a 5 on 5 engagement in Dota 2 nowadays. And whenever I look at two drafts and see that, okay, if everyone casts their spells, games even, there's a team that's just going to dominate team fights. And it's liquid in this game. Secret have to buy time, continue to scale, and 30 minutes plus, maybe they can start to eke out an advantage. Well, we'll see if they can finish out that advantage. And right before we jump into the game, let's hear from Roman on Team Liquid. All right, Roman, we are seeing an alchemist in a dark seer for the second time today. Were you watching the game this morning? Talk a little bit about your strategy here. I did watch the game in this morning, but to be fair, we played the same combination yesterday. So it's something we've played already. Yeah. I actually believe they admitted to copying that before. So why do you think this has been so successful for the teams at this TI? I mean, first of all, there is no shame in copying if it's good. And they're just very synergetic. Everything that Doxia offers to the game, Ultimus profits from it. I can't go into detail, obviously, but... No, please don't. But you feel pretty confident based on how Secret drafted as well. I mean, I have to say Secret's draft in game two is way better than in game one this time. So they will put up a good fight, I'm sure. All right. Thank you for your insight. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck. Back to you. Oh my goodness, gracious ladies and gentlemen, here on the floor of the Mercedes-Benz Arena, Trent, the coach feels like it's a better draft for Secret. Do you agree? How are you feeling? Uh, I mean, it's Alchemist, right? It was Io before, though, and that's kind of what I was thinking. I was like, oh, geez, I don't want to see this again. But now the Alchemist, I, I'm not going to lie, I was a little disappointed. I came back into the stage, I saw that big Alk on the screen, but it's okay. Uh, I, I like what Liquid have done, but I like what Secret have done, too. Okay. So well, we'll see if the, uh, the bristle that I've heard their coach talk so much about is, is uh, going to be the actual answer here to it, but uh, I have to say I am leaning towards that uh, Iron Shell Alchemist once again here. I mean, it's just terrifying. You Iron Shell, you get surged around, you're running at like max movement speed, and basically at that point, it's all about you. you know? yeah. This is where this guy likes to sit, and mind control on this Dark Seer, going to try and get off to a hot start. I will say that's one of the ways in which we've seen teams deal with Dark Seers in the past, is try and disrupt that laning stage. As it is Weeha playing on the Alk. As the battle for the bounty runes begin, Nisha putting up his hand for the high five, and a lot of damage being Someone traded back out. around. Kuro in some trouble as the punches come for Buffy, but not quite enough. And in fact, Nisha's going to be the one that's going to be ran down here. Does he go down first, or is it Kuro as the chase continues? Oh, one more punch, and a fairy fire. Kuro able to walk away, and now taking the shots over to the side as well. Now yapter has gone a bit too far. A little bit of a clowny beginning to this game as Kuro's going to salve back up. And in the end, nobody dies. <laughs> and the bounty run will just be waiting on the other side of the river there for Secret, so it should wind up being two for two. Now, uh, one thing that uh, we, uh, we've we seen as Wraith King and Alchemist both are rising in popularity has been those skeletons. Tell me about it. Uh, you get to that mid game, those skeletons wind up in the wrong place, and Weeha runs into them. It is a stupid amount of gold for an Alchemist. You basically get the Grievous Greed twice off of that whole army of skeletons, so depending on uh, you know, the later this game goes, of course, as uh, Kyle mentioned, Liquid are going to be looking to play very fast. But if we get into sort of an even-tempoed game, that is something that I think Nisha will have to keep in mind. Absolutely. And of course, you want to keep spamming out those skeletons because it's what helps you to accelerate so much in terms of farm. Mind Control not quite pulled there back into tower range. But this one could be a little bit of a tough matchup. Uh, for Zai, if the levels start to build up for Mind Control. Iron Shell, obviously, level one. The damage has been nerfed significantly, but still could yeah. be a problem as you get to the higher levels. I mean, usually it's the, the Darkseer that cuts creeps, right? But you might see Zai just, like, going away from the Darkseer at points here in this laning stage. We've seen some offlaners, or uh, in this case, offlaner playing in the safe lane, uh, create, with creative solutions to some of these matchups like this, where uh, the Darkseer, you know, he kind of has his gimmick with the Iron Shell, but it can be solved. And this camp was body blocked, it looks like, as well. So, ooh, Zai actually losing aggro for a minute. Uh, we'll be able to pick it back up afterwards and still secure these last hits. But there isn't a hard camp to pull to anyways. And Mind Control instead is going to pull his camp, uh, or rather his creep way back into the other camp. It's mid one, dropping somewhat low. Miracle trading hits with them. And does have a fair few quill stacks onto him. We'll see if mid one wants to try and push the... Oh, mid one wants that bottle. 
Oh, yeah, that fell nice. there too. So yeah, we'll be able to get over there. Big win for him in the mid lane here as he ups his regen. Of course, Kunkka has his own shenanigans when it comes to TPs and Xs and, and stuff. So he'll be able to uh, have his own sources in the regen battle. Yeah, it shouldn't run into too many issues either. Having that magic stick already online, 10 charges means he's got a ton of regen available to himself. So he'll farm out this medium camp well, simultaneously being able to get back in time to defend this tower. Top lane, I haven't talked about it a bunch, but it's a tri lane on tri lane. Yeah, one of these, uh, maybe start finding the sticks lanes, right? Team Seeker already has three. Meanwhile, I don't see any on the side of the. Oh, like, Kuro's got one, but the other two are not rocket sticks right now. So the spell spam will be in favor of Team Secret. And uh, we, we talked about this Darkseer pick coming in and the idea of just like, usually it supports the counter it, right? As a mid one of Miracle <laughs> continue to trade the mid lane here. Oh, Miracle, you have to play it a little bit safe there with the X Torrent. Oh, it's close. He's at 40 HP. Gonna salve up afterwards, but it does miss some last hits. He did the math, right? But uh, I mean, one of the reasons why they had these support duo uh, picked up early is that I think Yapsor is just, you know, this might be his last game at yeah. TI. If you had to pick a hero for Yapsor, what is it gonna be, right? There's no doubt. It, it's the Rubik. This is, when I think Yapsor, I think Rubik. He's taking it. Possibly his last game. So, although it did open up to like some counter picks, I think it is a support that's going to get banned in that second phase if it looks relatively good in the match at all. Definitely. Not only just the, the comfort on the hero, but it's not bad necessarily in this trial line either. Get the damage reduction on all of these heroes, then you can trade hits more effectively. So far, so good for Team Secret. Uh, the one thing that we always need to keep our eyes on, though, is how much farm does Weeha manage to pick up? How can they deal with this Alchemist? As Miracle is going to step on over and pick up a very fortuitous haste rune and gives him the dance away afterwards. Yeah, I'd say that's worthy of a jinx. Denying a bottle and getting yourself out of a sticky situation there and some goo. So again, four minute mark, still no kills as some of these games have kind of looked like that no rush 10 minute style of Dota that we became very familiar with in the group stages. But at least for my money, it feels like Secret are gonna need to be the ones that keep that pressure onto the Alk and make sure they're also blocking out the camps. So there is no stacks coming out there later on. Yeah, even if he uh, falls behind a little bit in the laning stage, of course, uh, the Alk is just looking for those levels so that he can try and gain well back in the jungle. And they have four very good heroes for making space across the map. Right. GH, Woo, that's a big crit. A lot of stun coming out there. Chase comes through. They're sitting in the acid spray with the ET moving in. This actually might be first blood. Possibly needs the stun to come through. Not quite on the edge. And who else could it be but Yavzor picking up the first blood? All right, two games in a row. He'll take it. It wasn't enough previously, but we'll see if this Crimson will do it for him. Three for one on the bounty runes with Mike control a little bit of trouble, but the surge away should be enough. Ooh, just like barely it. off the mark. Yeah, Zai's going for big plays. It's a level two surge, so Zai's still going to at least get one more shockwave on him, and his bottle's already used. Yeah. Uh, attempting, but not enough. Wasn't quite able to finish off mind control, who does just head back to the shrine now. And Zai just getting level six after, I'm sure. Oh, you know, maybe, but it is 200 mana, so hard to, uh, to keep that one going before the arcane boots. But a much better start to this game, it feels like, for Team Secret, as it does look like they're doing quite well in these levels. Now, Miracle does have level six, as mid one is just gonna try and keep Outlast hitting him here in the mid lane, get two range creep denies while simultaneously leveling out that harassment. And it does look like it's going to be Invis Rune up top, spawning and picked up by mid one. Torrent? Still picks it up the bottle. Yeah. Yeah, so they're just to help protect too. So, mid one with his level six, he's uh, making a bit of a rotation here. Uh, dire vision, they don't have anything nearby, but they will be able to just say like, hey, he's, he's gone. And then if Yapsor shows in the lane, which he just did, then they're gonna know that something's up. Yeah, need to be wary. Mid one, they drop down that sentry ward. It's not quite gonna be on the mark and turn on to GH. His level three does not have any points up in the cold embrace. You can see Liquid, they're just playing so safe. They, they know that this could be coming. And mid one now, sort of hanging out for a little while. <laughs> they're scanning to see if he's jungling, yeah. right? They're, they're in there, because if Bristol's missing, that's where he's got to be. But then he reveals himself. And just is going to pull this creep wave back and now try and apply some pressure onto we I really like this move a lot, because Yapsor gets some time to himself, and now they can try and shut down this Alchemist's farm. 
Yeah, and we have not a lot of options when he's stuck back here. He has a Quelling Blade, but Nisha, he's carving his way in there too. He's got the phase boots. Ah, uh, does he look left? He goes right. Nisha not realizing he's over there to the side. And Kuro going to get the shackles. Now the TP rotation coming from Miracle, who's level 7. Going to be able to find Nisha, get the kill without even having to use anything from the Kunga. And now GH going to be the trade-off. So they can't quite manage to bring down Weehawk. So, to like, kind of even across the board in some sense. It's like you got a core, you got a support, but you're forcing rotations. Yapsor is getting that mid lane all to himself. Oh, and Puppy gets caught there. He's going to drop down the boat afterwards. They did have an Observer Ward in the area, which should signal that they're going to need to get that D Ward later. But in the meantime, Miracle picks up the kill. So we're just uh, continuing to farm it up there. While well, Zaya, I saw Mind Control was back at the fountain there. TP on CD. Nisha trying to make a rotation there with the RP. Oh, nice little job done here as they get the full stun combo coming out. Mind Control skewered afterwards, but away from Nisha. And now the surge away. He does have another stun in three seconds. But there is another rotation coming from Yapsor as well, realizing he's heading off the other direction. They will have the telekinesis into the follow up stun and finally clean up the kill. Oh, and a regen rune for Zai, who's at 15 mana right now. I'm sure he is extremely pleased with that. So, solid on the uh, the first RP there. Managed to grab a kill onto mind control. While Kuro is on a warding mission deep inside that Radiant territory, gets a beautiful ward up there, as long as he's not scouted on the way out. And they don't have any vision up in this northern part, so they probably don't know this has happened. Well, Ed one going to go for the south play underneath the tower does move back in now afterwards for the last hit manages to get it but does he pay the price mind control is here as well they pull no the timing and now the stomp to turn it a little bit of a miscue there by miracle a rare mistake they still get the kill yeah winds up being fine there's just too many heroes now liquid have committed a ton of vision in this top area of the map now but they've lost that tier one tower i think they were trying to perhaps hold that for as long as they could because if you keep that tower, you're going to keep forcing Secret up here because they want to knock it down so bad because you know they want to be pressing into your jungle. Uh, now these wards being left behind are essentially there to scout when Secret are going to be smoking for the Alchemist kill. Ah, but Elk right now farming out in that triangle anyways. And that is a lot of, not wasted vision, at least not quite as nice a vision as they might have wanted. But yeah, It still spots things like courier rotations, right? So. Yeah. Then they know where some of the heroes are located based off of that. Nisha is heading in towards his Midas now with those 10-minute bounty rune mark. Top should go both ways to Secret and Bot. Yapsor is going to try and hold one with his Telekinesis. Mid one even going for the other. Okay, they're going for four bounties here to try and slow down the Alp. And he walks back away, able to pick it up. Secret. Very important. Great stuff there. And now, getting some extra aggro on the Miracle. Three stacks there of the Goo as well as the chase down with the Quills. Miracle trying to make his walkway happen, and looks like mid one not going to attempt fade any further. We talk a lot about uh, LGD playing this like perfect Dota sort of style, where it feels like when you're looking at this bird's eye view that we're privy to, you you have all these ideas like, okay, in order to shut down Alchemist, you have to stop him from farming the jungle. You have to bully him in the lane. You have to make sure they don't get any bounty runes. And I think Secret are hitting a lot of those marks right now. And although the Alks on top, of course, it's, it's not that much of a lead, right? Yeah. He, he's not uh, the end-all be-all. And er, earlier uh, today, we had the same situation, right? With the uh, the Bristle versus the Alchemist, and it did work out. It's true. But the other little box that you need to check oftentimes there is not losing a terrible, terrible fight uh, to the Alchemist yeah, afterwards. Yeah, well, I mean, and the we, one thing we, don't, we, don't, we don't talk about the rest of that. <laughs> the, the one thing that I will point out is that it's four melee heroes right now against a Winter Wyvern with a Darkseer Kunk afterwards. So you hit a big Winter's Curse, things start to look real scary as we're already seeing those skeletons giving Weeha the nice little injection of gold there. Oh, no, stop. That's the skeletons. That, that's where things get tough, and he's happy about it. Keep them far away from the, uh, the Alchemist guy. Nisha already having that Hand of Midas completed. Now going back for the Radiance that we've seen all so often on this hero. And he's keeping up in farm right now with Weeha. Doing a very good job of it. And uh, I think Zai, too, also a bit of a standout here, right? Like, his farm right now, almost up to 5k. He's well ahead of, uh, of uh, Miracle as well. As often is the case, Yapsor almost ahead of the opposing offlaner at 3,500 net worth. Wanting to be one of those team fight turnaround heroes. If he can make it happen. Yeah, he's going to have enough for his uh, eighth in lines here. If he can clean up these mid last hits. This is mid one again. 
Uh, it does dodge a torrent, but it will be a bottled ruin up at the top for Zai, who has an arcane and an RP available. Both of those Observer Wards planted by Kuro earlier on do still survive, so they're spotting that rotation now from Zai up top. They've been seeing Nisha farming here on the Ancients, and that's giving all the space in the world for something like Weehaw to play freely. Kuro even uh, acting as the vanguard here, up ahead of the Alchemist, in between any potential rotations from the side of Team Secret. Everything for my Alk. Yep. This is the way that people play Dota around this hero, and I really like that Observer Ward placed down on the right-hand side of the map. It's not Ooh. scout out anything. Mind Control is stealing the Mud Golems, though, not cool. You know, you gotta leave those for your Alk. <laughs> That's for sure. But what a waste. He just, he just leaves one for Weehaw. He's like, why is this camp half farmed? <laughs> That's an immediate ping. You know what's happening. Yeah, but yeah, just look at this guy. Like, just a second ago, the Wraith was basically on par with him, and now 1,500 gold ahead. It's so difficult to play Dota against this hero. And if your secret, I mean, is it just try and make a move now, shut down the rest of the map? Uh, they don't really have the same tower push that you saw previously from Liquid, right? When when Liquid were trying to play the super high speed, they had the Lush Rack. Right? Right. And they're just able to walk and destroy them so easily. Uh, Secret, it's, it's a longer effort. I mean, how long has Yapsor just been mid? Like, shoving creep waves and everything, and hasn't resulted in that much tower burst. Now, he does get the level 4 acid spray, so quite a bit of damage. 7 armor reduction as well, while you have a Burster back on your team is very good. And uh, they do have the Siege Wagon of mid one, So this is your tower pressure. But even that, look, it's slow and it's very dangerous. Even when you're this tanky, he's alone. Gotta be careful, there's nobody else here and all of Liquid shows up in numbers. Mid one's just dead. And there it is. Still a 14 minute Radiance on Alchemist. And he TP's up there to clean up the second round of skeletons that were pushed out. So Weeha completely alone to do whatever he wants. And Secret needing to come up with answers because right now they've only been able to take down that one top tier one tower. Yeah, not getting the mid lane down, not able to occupy that dire jungle. It's just feeling like they can't fight the heroes on the side of Liquid right now, apparently. And even holding your own towers is simply not enough. I mean, Liquid have no tower damage. Yeah. I mean, they're under like 300 total. <laughs> you know, it's kind of nothing. But they don't need to cross the river. That's on you, Secret. Well, 15 minute mark's gonna come in again, and Secret have done a good job of shutting down those bounty runes away from Weeha. But we'll see if they can make it happen oh. another time. It's that fickle timing, you know? Yeah. If you don't hit it for Secret, you just one misstep, and this alchemist is completely out of control. Three thousand oh, more skeletons. God, it's so much gold. Yeah, he's three thousand gold ahead of the Wraith King. Now he just keeps farming up. Still, though, only a thousand gold lead in total. And as you can see, bounty runes about even. But it is that slow, steady drop-off that you can see in experience yep. and net worth. We're starting to find these contributors to the, the team fight picking up items, though. Uh, you have the Blink Dagger on Zai before he picked up the Vlads. He had the Vlads too for a long time. Uh, you have the the Rubik already up into his Aether Lens and now trying to go towards a Force Staff to try and break up some of this Wombo combo that you see from, like, the Kunkka and the Darkseer, the Winter Wyvern, trying to spread things out a little bit with your clumped up melee team. Well, meanwhile, on the Dire side, You've got uh, Winter Wyvern trying to get in towards that Aether. She's not too far away when she breaks apart her, uh, her Arcane Boots, but that's a, an excellent tool for the team. And, and well, of course, she's going to get some bracers. As, yeah. as the five life decrease. So good ward placement, though, is it is keeping it uh, far enough away from that dire sentry. So they, they do see what Weehaw's up to. And if there is another nice thing to say right now about Team Secret, it's they're identifying some of the, the issues in their draft. They're trying to get those team fight items online like we're talking about, but also they, they've gotten some pretty decent farm here on Rubik. About to hit level 10. Uh, also, Aether Lens completely like you're talking about. Yeah. And maybe that's going to be their goal is have four heroes that all can fight Welcome when Liquid back. are mainly just playing around this out and see if they can possibly take down the big raid boss. Yeah, it's funny to see Yapsor makes like that's not a even nine nine shell. Not even using the uh Wow, that is a nice idea. Not even using the acid spray, right? He's just like holding on to it because uh, he doesn't want to uh, push it anywhere away from that tower because he knows he's in the danger zone. Just trying to find one safe place for himself. Oh, here come the skelly bros. Ow! Hurry! The skeletons! <laughs> well, we all think there's a move coming here. So 
So maybe he's just trying to hide a little bit with his BKB, but okay, here we go. Hello, Skeletons. Oh, 32, 32, 32. Just keep on. Been, oh, more Skeletons. Oh, more 32. <laughs> oh. They just keep that's, on coming, that's man. That's great. <laughs> that hero is so insane. But the smoke up coming now from Liquid, as it looks like they are ready to make a move themselves. They have the spear oh, vessel man. done for Miracle. It's the BKB on the Elk. It's very scary. They have to try and kite this, or they need to blow him up before it gets popped. And it is so hard if this Winter Wyvern's going to be there covering him. The only saving grace is that they don't have that Aether Lens yet, but uh, Liquid have done it. They have uh, become their water and passed the river. They've gone upstream, finally. And at the same time, Secret are occupying that territory you, territory you hope they would, right? Getting into that uh, big farm zone for the Alchemist as he holds the mid tower. Mid one looking to trade a tier one bot for a tier two top here. Doing what they can. And as you can see, Weeha holds on to that mid tower. They take down the bottom one. 18 minutes in, still only a thousand gold lead with the Alchemist draft. But it's starting to feel like maybe this group up is going to come very soon. Nisha already out there. They have the torrent. Going to connect onto the Wraith King, holding onto the boat for the moment. So they get the search forward. They find Nisha, but completely alone. And Weeha going to be nearby as well. They take him down one time. Can they get him a second time? Nobody from Secret is here to help. They just bailed. They're like, Nisha, you're on your own, buddy. They, I think they got him. Uh, they're going for another round. Puppy. Maybe in some trouble as we had doesn't quite manage to get there in time. And we'll pick up the illusion rune, start to spread out the things. But you can see Liquid, they're just raring to go. They're right, ready to look fight. At this surged up Miracle right now. Four points in the X. They are so lucky he didn't find anybody. Now he grabs mid one. Oh, there's no shrine nearby either. Already throwing down that acid spray. They have the stun connection. Can they bring him down in time? They don't have the chemical rage, but I'm not sure if it's going to matter. Yapsor trying to play spoiler. They get a pretty nice, well, actually, oh. RP. And now to turn it back around, mid one still barely living. We are trying to run him down. And with the spirit vessel, as well as the radiance burn, it's going to be enough to take down mid one and i was wrong the rp was not good enough uh the rp the earth splitter it, these spells just they're a lot harder to hit than iron shell surge you ain't wrong a little less skill involved and just as powerful if not more so they try and lurk behind the tower there see if anybody wants to come and defend this but yeah it, it didn't happen and again, you talk about it, it's the ease of execution that you want to have in this lineup. Kyle talked about it on the panel that this lineup from Liquid, they group together, they buy the team fight items, get the BKB onto Weeha, and just run at you. And perhaps the most frightening of times versus an Alchemist when that Blink Dagger comes out when he's getting close to level 15. Damage or health, however he feels the game is going. Both of those talents is helping him out so much. Holding on to that mid tier one tower still. 20 minute mark. Does look like Bounty Rune's gonna be picked up. Two piece there. Secret actually able to get on that third one, so. Guardian Greaves done for the Darkseer. Or yeah. regen Yapsor in trouble. Jumps forward with the stun onto two. Weeha does not really care right now. Let's well, Chemical Rage pops it immediately. Absor tries to run away. His puppy is just going to get barreled underneath this tier one tower. They do manage to find the stun, but immediately afterwards, there's going to be the vacuum back, the pull in onto two. We have realized the rest of my team is fighting there. Probably get together with them as the surge keeps Kuro alive. Zai still chasing, wanting to find this pesky Shadow Shaman, but the Hex comes out afterwards, and now the heal coming through. Tor is going to connect, but they manage to take down one. And now Mind Control, his surge should be wearing off soon. They still go for the chase down. Do they decide to follow it up? Mid one, looking for the punches. This is looking okay right now for Secret, but they can't quite find the finish. Well, right and now the buyback. Back. Okay, they're coming in with the Shadow Shaman. He's got another round of Hex. The Stomp's gonna connect. And it looks like with that Secret are gonna try and retreat, but they find the X again onto Yapsor. Another four staff save in the day. Earth Splitter comes through. It's not quite and enough. He's there. Uh, he jumps in again, finds Yapsor, trying to get that kill, and he will be able to get it. But the RP onto three, the turnaround comes. The curse is there to interrupt, and they don't have an answer. Torrent both gonna connect on Anisha after the stun. The walk away happens in mid one, trying to be this big bad boss in the middle of it all. And he is doing a good chunk of damage, taking down GH and barely. No one's able to walk away again. They can't keep getting away with this liquid, making the fight last long enough for them to win it as they burn through the ulti of the Wraith King. 
And right now, Secret, they still can't take that tier one tower. How about another X? The pullback gets him again, and Magnus not able to save the day. Back, oh. back out of the skewer. Where are you going? Get over here. As the torrent is going to land, and he should try to run again. Another round of those spear vessels. Liquid, well and truly doing it. These fights around the 20 minute mark, this Alchemist Blink Dagger are just devastating. He's just in and out of the fight. It's so hard to keep him locked down. They're trying to target those heroes on the side. They take down Kuro twice. They nearly get GH, but GH was a masterful winner's curse there to stop that big RP that came in from Zai. He caught three, and he had Nisha right there, empowered on the Wraith King, looking for the damage, and then there was nothing. And you can see Nisha's doing oh, what he can. Oh. This has the Radiance going. Yeah, let's just smoke him and go again. Why got, not? got an Arcane Rune on our Alchemist. You guys, you guys done? You want to fight some more? Sure. This Surged Kunkka is perhaps more terrifying than the Surged Alchemist. This time he's going to have to do it himself, though. Oh, my God. And they find him. The Wraith King just going to drop. And that is another thing. With Team Secret, you got to fight around your cooldowns. Liquid, they can just keep running. And keep running they will as they find Yapsor, get the stun, Weeha, just pummeling him down into the ground. The fourth snap is no savior here, sir. Oh, and they're just going to keep the group up alive. Vlad's Greaves done for mind control. Wow. It's Darks here. <laughs> you look at him, he just keeps popping the stun and running at him. Yeah, Weeha has no cares. This guy. It was, what, five minutes ago where it was just Weeha and a bunch of Radiant heroes on top, and now suddenly it's Weeha, Nisha, and now Dire. They have eclipsed past those on Secret who were near the top of the net worth chart. Zai has his RP back. Mid one has finished the Solar Crest. As we talk about, you need those cooldowns, but in the meantime, when they are down... Oh god, mid one. Kind of away from the rest of his team. They do have Magnus behind him. Chasing Nisha, wants to get a kill. Shadow Shaman, gonna be surged and go for the walkway. They drop the Serpa Wards down, and Weeha turns, finds the first kill on the Wraith King. Can they get him again? The apps are trying to steal what he can. They already have the boat down, giving him that bonus, and now the X marks the spot. There's a pretty good combination coming out with the RP, but it's not enough. It's not nearly enough. It's not even close to enough. Zai trying to run. Weeha has him in his sights. Do they dive past the Tier 3 tower? No. Oh. It's gonna pass off. Cosplay is Scorpion right now. That's an Ether Shock here from Yapso, but not enough to do anything. And you just, you highlight these heroes in the team fights, and you know, he's got the Crimson Guard, he's got the Greaves, he's got the Vlads. They just have so many heals working on their side of Liquid. Perfect five-man Dota items, and just uh, weaving in and out. They know exactly how to play these team fights. Well, and mid one right now is cutting creep waves, doing a good job of buying his team a little bit more time, as they do have to come back to escort their creep wave. Now you can see the swing. Dagger. The swing back into the probability over the last couple of minutes. It's just been Liquid coming online, and well, now they have the shackles on the mid one. But they don't even feel confident trying to go at the Shadow Shaman. I mean, they know that if Shadow Shaman's shackling your virtual back, there's probably more coming. You know. <laughs> So Assault Kiras done. So much gold into the coffers of Weeha, this 25 minute mark. And for Secret, it's just, it feels like it's just a game of holding out, trying to keep all of this pressure off of their base. And to be fair, they are doing a decent job of it, but, but what is that wait for? What, what What's the turning point for Secret? Yeah, the, the high ground defense is, uh, you know, you've got the Magnus, sure, but uh, your empowered hero, it's it's not this, like, Ember or this hero that really feels like you can do something. It's Nisha on a Wraith King here, and maybe he can get that incredible damage under the empower when they're RP'd. It's just, I don't know, I feel like you're waiting for mid one to get into those wild talents later, later on. Yeah, and you can see there on that graphic, just Weeha completely out of control, 9-0 and 2. At this point in time, rocking 800 GPM, expecting that to go up unless there's some... Oh, what's going fights. up? <laughs> it might just. I would invest now. Give him an Aegis just in case they thought they could kill Weeha. Don't want to hand over any big streaks. And GH is on the hunt here with his Blink Dagger and an Invis Ruin. He wants to see if anyone is split pushing. And lo and behold... Yeah, Zai is TP. Just came back. Now Yaps are out of the lane too. And oh. I realize, I mean, if 
anybody shows for a second there. They can go on him, but it looks like GH not wanting to. All right, we're making a cut of path here. <laughs> Timber saw will be pleased. Inside there, they're looking to set something up here. A, uh, a two hero play, bringing someone back and then going for the big one. But now they see GH and say, abort, abort. Now try to run. Good catch, but the winner's curse range. is going to be enough. I mean, how are you ever going to get a good RP off versus that? Well, maybe if it's down, they can take a fight around it. As Yap's always going to get ran down here. He's uh, doing his best to try and throw some damage on him. Meanwhile, at your base, uh, there is an Alchemist who is charging his stun and contemplating some plays here. Oh, he's just going in, but going to get stunned underneath the tower. Maybe an opportunity is the torrent. I mean, we all, if you're getting hit by the tower, I might as well drop my wards down. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. That's value plays from Captain Kuro. He knows what to do. Captain Kuro. Absolutely. Tier he could, three he could have a cereal brand, I think. Goes down. Another round of stuns. Nisha trying to hold on to this high ground, if at all possible. But Liquid, the engagement, they don't need to do it. They can just back out now, take down these shrines. And cool, calm, and collected. Yep, flowchart, Dota. Making it happen. Coming out. They want the shrine. They already got the Aegis. They kind of did in reverse order, but that's fine. And secret. All right, this is this is your TI hopes. This is your season hope. This is everything you've worked for for the past 365 days. I can't remember when they get eliminated. But either way, it's a long time. It's every day. It's every night. It's what you think about as a TI player. And I'm sure they're feeling in there right now, you know? What, what do we have to do? They know they're at a disadvantage, there's no doubt. It's not the kill score. It's not just the Optimus. It's the uh, unrelenting pressure of Liquid overflowing onto the Radiant side of the map. And it's so hard to stop. Mid-1 doing the best that he possibly can for his team right now, just trying to clear through these creep waves and keep them off of their towers. Have the split push coming from the Rave King as well, having a nice little bit of pressure onto this bottom tier two tower, even empowering the skeletons wherever they can. As Nisha throws out the stun, they have the chemical rage, another round of it, trying to lay into this alchemist as he hits onto their tier three tower. Uh, the pressure is coming bottom, and they're going to have to go back and deal with it. But that also means or... a lot of gold going into the coffers of Weha. Yeah. And more skeletons. I, yeah, I don't know about this one, guys. It's so much gold. Yeah. Oh, wait, but back on the other side of the map, maybe a chance for a fight. I was a little surprised they didn't X him. He doesn't have bots, but it doesn't look like it's going to be punished here. If anything, he's just the one that's being targeted. Oh, Spirit Vessel using the X after the torrent. Missing on the Tidebringer. These things happen. Don't worry, guys. Sounds like you. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. Obviously, uh, Liquid not really looking to commit all too much there onto Nisha. Just toying with him, threatening, pushing him back into his base, and just saying, yeah, you, you know you're not supposed to be up here, right? And the, the ultimate win of this style of Dota right now is oh the map control that you get, getting four more bounty runes for Team Liquid. And as we've talked about time and again, Team Secret, with their furthest advance so far in the history of this tournament, but the ultimate Raid boss being liquid will knock them out time and again. Looking like it could happen here again in game number two, unless something changes. And they have the, uh, the satanic now uh, swapped in for Weeha. So their big plan in order to try and kill this alchemist is either like eliminate everyone else around him and then try and fight him, which you know that's obviously the, the harder one to do, or you try and burst him down all in one. So he's protecting himself from the RP with the Sasquatch. Be careful. Be careful. Chase down coming. They've got a lot of control onto this guy. The boat is going to lie afterwards, but he does have the walk away. Another round of X, another round of stun. Four staff, the mid one alive. They won't be able to fully commit onto him. And actually, instead, mid one, got a little bit fresh with Miracle there. That is some very scary stuff now with the Solar Crest on Miracle, too, though. He can put the hurt into mid one. Zai continues his presence in that bottom lane, though. Going to see if he can draw them back once more. It's only 10 seconds left on that Aegis. Secret, they, they did get a win here, right? They have held out against the Aegis. Sure, they lost the Shrine, but they didn't lose a full lane of racks. And maybe that can get them to that next round of items. As Azai keeps up that pressure on the bottom tier three with the creep wave. Well played by Secret to hold on. A lot of other teams might have fallen apart. The problem is they have the Kunkka. And one of the reasons Hero is so powerful is they can just X back, deal with the wave. And so if Zai ever blinks and TP's back, that's what they're going to do. They're just going to X back mind control here. So they'll get down an Iron Shell. But uh, 
<laughs> Zai sees that X and says, oh, you're not hanging around? Okay. He can stay down on that side. So we have the full TP back. So he's probably going to buy his bots. And yeah, he's going to look for the kill there on the Zai if he wants to show himself again. He, he's waiting. Uh, but Zai, very wise to the fact that that could be coming, is going to back out now. He does have enough gold for Guardian Greaves if he wants to fully commit, but obviously at this stage in the game, you also have to be saving for buyback. Yeah. But that could be one of those big turning factors as well. A good chunk of this damage on Liquid comes from the physical. Yeah. Minus armor. Nisha is getting a AC oh. picked up here. He's going to lose his buyback. Bottle up, bottle up, bottle up. Got to play for the Radiant Stick. Jeez. Zai barely getting out of there. Yeah, that was very close. Caught sight of him for a moment. And meanwhile, up on the high grounds, looking for the chase. Liquid, they're thinking about it as they get the TP boots coming in from the out, looking for that X play as they already have one round of it. Force staff a little bit late now. The jump forward, Weeha finding and killing off Yapsor. Hit one. Protected for the moment by Nisha, but this is the problem, trying to run away from the X marks combination. Level 20 is not going to end up running into any issues with not getting his ultimate off, but losing the ultimate at this stage is bad enough. Zai pulls back in one. This is a nice way to start this fight. They have to stop to follow it up as well. They don't want to jump on him in one. Nisha able to get the walk away. They're Zai trying, thought about it. Trying to hold that buyback on the app, so they don't want to burn it right now. They just say, we can trade one for one. We'll take it. But uh, that was a great jump by Weeha, right? Although they're all jumping on a mid one, he, he sees that mid one's being helped out by someone, and he knows I can just blow over to that back line instantly. This is, you know, again, 13,000 lead, but maybe a wave, maybe a chance. They're initiating already the pullback. A pretty nice combination there as they have the sleep as well. So at least onto one with the vacuum wall, and now they've got some more heroes of their own. The chase board looking for it. Zai in trouble, does not have buyback. He fully committed in with the items. As mind control looking like he's in some trouble himself. They'd one popping the BKB, looking to chase, but isn't going to be able to find that alchemist. Now, will they try and turn without the BKB, or does Nisha have enough damage to threaten them I, out here? I mean, they don't have Zai. They don't have a lot of their team fight items with that. Oh, and that's the Torrent. Oh, to interrupt makes it happen. Jeez, that could have been dangerous with the Spirit Vessel still there for Miracle. Yeah, really well played by Yapsor to able to make that turnaround happen. So, Secret still hold. I think we've used a lot of David versus Goliath analogies in this one, but holding on to your high ground. Yeah, I, I don't think that was supposed to be this matchup, but it has felt that way. Starting to feel that way. Another round of X's. Secret. Done a good job of dodging away from it when it looks a little bit testy. They're trying to burn this BKB. Stun comes through. They have the stop afterwards. Wraith King and a lot of damage coming his way. They even dropped the wards. Up on the high ground. Gonna pop the ultimate now. Weeha looking to chase. Follow forward with this stun. Do they have anything else to save it? It doesn't look like it right now. In some trouble. Nisha turns to fight. Able to pop the BKB and go for the walk away. So Liquid. Not able to break high ground. I think with the pressure on Liquid to go high ground, their BKB timers are actually more valuable than secrets. So if I'm trading that out for the Wraith King, I'm taking it. Yeah. Every time right now, because maybe we'll get a window where we can actually deal with this guy. It's down to six seconds now onto Weeha. And how much does the complexion of this game change if that BKB wears down to the five second mark? Like, does Secret have this in the later stages? Uh, I mean, it's still big plays on big plays. Like, when's the last time we've even seen GH have to blink, right? Good one. Needs to be careful. Yapsor able to steal something there. It's the acid spray. Lay it down the other direction. That's a lot of minus armor paired together with the bristleback. What die. can they do? They're in trouble and going to drop. Mid one dead, 80 seconds without buyback. And Nisha, the next one on the plate. He's 17 seconds away from having his BKB, but they're going to be their first liquid. Chasing forward, have themselves the stun. They control the Wraith King. He's going to come back in a second, seven seconds until BKB, but it's looking like it might not be enough as they have the Hex there. The follow up coming with the shackles afterwards. Don't even need it. They take down the Wraith King. Oh, 50 seconds still with no bristle, and that means the Roche will be respawning. Liquid not going to rush anything. They're TPing back top, pushing the wave. Secret went for the push mid because they knew that they were focusing on Denisha there, but Poppy might feed for it. Yeah, he's just giving up his life at this point to try and take down the creeps, it feels like, but they will not be dissuaded. He wants more. Doesn't quite get the vision there. He went for the health talent, so not going to have any advantage. There's nighttime versus I and Zion sees that as, oh, that was close. Yeah. I'm out of here. Time to run away. Wyvern even finishing off the Aeon Disc, so there's no way that... Kuro, he has wards. Yeah, they're forcing buybacks here. Double buyback. Coming through. 
Bristleback still 14 away. Nisha throws the stun to start. Zai pulls him in a little bit closer. They have the telekinesis afterwards, trying to control, but the torrent is there for the interrupt, and it looks like the first melee backs is going to go down. Team Liquid able to take it, and Weehot still cool as a cucumber, just hanging out in that mid lane. Yeah, very hard to deal with these wards when you only have one ranged hero, and uh, the last thing Yapsor wants to do is reveal his positioning. So they would be more than happy to jump right on top of him with Weehaw, so... Back for an Aegis and a Cheese. Typically the game-ending Roche here. And when you have a 20k lead, Liquid have every opportunity to close this one out with it. Yeah, this has just been such an uphill battle for Team Secret. Even just trying to hold on to their structures. They need some crazy Earth Splitter oh? into RP here. I mean, they're moving in. Already Wraith King getting the Hex out mid one there, but they've got the Aegis, and now Secret are fully committed. They've got and a Lord. They gotta go in. This is Danger Town as they find Zai. Force Staff trying to keep him alive, if at all possible. Skewer to run, he's still alive there. They did kill off the Shadow Shaman, but the buyback comes, oh, and Zai another round. Glimmer Cape keeping him alive. Can they make this work? They might be able to find a big RP, if at all possible. Looking for the opening side, making the play. It's a pretty good one with the Winter Wyvern ulti to interrupt. The Ghost Ship gonna lay it stolen from Yapsor. Everybody from Secret playing their that absolute hearts out, and they're able to make it happen. It's only on a curl, but now Miracle may be going down as well. They pop the BKB for mid one. Still looking for the chase. They take down Zai. He buys back. Buyback coming also from Mind Control. Weeha under fire. Maybe the crowd feeling a little bit of a sign of life if they can make it happen. But Weeha, he gets the keys oh, off, God. able to run away afterwards. The stun is gonna come out in just a moment. They find themselves this ET. The boat's gonna land. Now what more do you have left in the tank is the Bristleback is gone. Secret needing to run, needing to hide. Where else can they go though? As Zai still controlled, stomped. In a way, can they make it happen? The skewer pull back onto the other side, but it just pulls him closer to Puppy. Nisha trying to stand tall in this fight. He still has an ultimate available, as 21,000 net worth lead is going to continue to grow. They have Nisha under control as well. And just like that, Team Liquid looking to finish off this carry one more time. The Torrent is going to land. The Cold Embrace keeps them survivable. They have an X on to Zai. Liquid just running through Secret at this point as Zai tries to run. But get back here again. Mind Control continues to control. And that is going to be four dead and Liquid ready to run down a lane. Secret did so much in that team fight. That's a fight that should not look nearly that close. 16,414 damage there from the Wraith King, but that's largely because he was just walking around, trying to help burn them down. But GH is too good. I mean, he's waiting for that RP. He knows that that's their big way back into this one, and, and he won't let them have it. You feel it, ladies and gentlemen. They're trying to pull Miracle into the fountain, do whatever at all possible, but Miracle, he smells it. He wants to go on. He wants to play further in this tournament, and the Ancient is falling as Liquid again are going to knock Secret out of TI. Well, OG, you take the high road and I'll take the low road. Way down in the lower bracket for Team Liquid, but it looks just fine for them. Undefeated as they now 2-0 Team Secret. Again, they have eliminated them here in the lower bracket of the International. And what an unbelievable series. Team Liquid, a great story for them, and obviously all the respect in the world for their competitors, Team Secret. You love to see it. Like I said, there's just so much respect and admiration between these two teams. And while it hurts to go out now, I'm sure they wouldn't have wanted to any other way for Team Liquid. So they exchange embraces. So here we are. We're down to three. One more day. That's it. One two last more day series. CI. We have Liquid. Coming back tomorrow, we'll have LGD and of course, the returning champions, OG, are here to defend their ages. Ladies and gentlemen, we wouldn't have it any other way. An amazing top four, top three right around the corner. Stay tuned. We're head back to Shiver and the panel one last time for today. Thank you indeed. That's the third time.